And a very good afternoon to you and welcome here to the Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Premier Junior Camogie Championship Semi-Finals. It's live from Dunamore Ashburn here in County Mead and it sees Roscommon take on uh, Tipperary. That is the first game coming up. It throws in in a couple of minutes time. My name is Killian Whelan and we'll be bringing you the best of this action from this semi-final for the right to play in Crow Park on the 6th of August for the K Mills Cup. Who will it be? Will it be Roscommon? Will it be Tipperary? Will Roscommon come in on the back of uh, their victory in the quarter final? Final recently against Limerick by 13 points to 1-7. Lost to clear in the group stages but did beat Loud and Tyrone whereas Tipperary, well they were uh, easy enough victors against Wicklow and Cavan in their group stages. Highly fancy to be able to make it through after failing to get out of the group the last time uh, but uh, this time a group that are fairly well knitted together and looking to get back to Crow Park uh, for the first time since 2002 when they lost out in the Premier Junior Final to Kilkenny. Of course they last won it in 2001 one. Uh, for Roscommon of course they have had no wins at this uh, at K Mills level getting to the final three times last time in 2015 when they lost out to Leash. So we've been told there's uh, no changes to the teams as per programme so we begin then with in goal Michaela Fallon from Oran of course uh, she the county long puck champion of 2022 an accomplished darts player we'll expect to see plenty of darts uh, I would imagine fire down on the uh, Tipperary half back line uh, throughout this game. The uh, full back line made up of Shauna Hanley of Tulsk Marie Carty of Oran and Chloe White Lennon of At League. Sarah Dooley, Sally Bulger and Anya Mara they make up the half-back line from Porrick Pierce's Four Roads and St Dominic's Sarah of course coming from good stock her uh, dad uh, Ronnie was a former Roscommon hurler and also of course Sally Bulger dad David is from uh, Kilkenny so I'm sure he'll be keeping an eye on action uh, tomorrow Jewel star Orla Conley is midfield alongside another dual player Rachel Fitzmaurice who's also a very talented uh, international soccer player at under 16 level and a ballet dancer as well she of at league Shauna Fallon she's the resident makeup artist as they say in this panel she from Four Roads Neve Watson of St Dominic's is joined by her clubmate uh, Neve Fitzgerald on the half forward line and the full forward line made up of uh, Anna Campbell she the two bean barista I believe as well she's the woman to go to uh, if you want your coffees uh, down around St Dominic's anyway Oren's Claire Curley uh, well, she's the most experienced player on the team she's getting married in September wouldn't she like to be in Crow Park just before that as well uh, she is at full forward and then Sinead Mannion of Four Roads she is in the other corner Tipperary then of course uh, line out with uh, an experienced enough crew along their uh, team with uh, a couple of uh, former senior uh, panellists involved here today in the likes of Jean Kelly and uh, Claire Stakelham but they also have uh, a, a couple of sisters involved from Silver Mines and the Murphys who are on the bench but uh, some that have a, a very good pedigree also as well. They begin with Aoife O'Brien of Cashel King Cormac, she's in goal. Lisa Cahill of Kilruan McDonough's, she of course the first cousin of Jerome who captained Kilruan to their senior hurling title in tip uh, last year. Ashing Sheedy, a very famous name from Port Row, of course, daughter of Liam, she at full back and Kira Ryan is in the other corner. Rachel Marr then uh, Sianeth Walsh and uh, Kira McHugh make up the half back line it's Ellen Cunine and Katie Fitzgerald in this middle of the field of Silver Mines of Boris Ali Turla Sarsfield is represented by Aoife Dwyer Kira Brennan of St Killian's and Claire Stakelham of course she's a fine pedigree behind her from Holy Cross Bally Cahill first cousin of the Mars and of course Declan Hannon of Limerick fame Aoife McLaughlin well she also has a good pedigree of Shannon Rovers her dad is the former Tipperary goalkeeper of course and a two time all star in 79 and 80 that of course Pat McLaughlin Clodagh Horgan of Borland Duala is at full forward and Jean Kelly well she's been shooting the lights out she of Airog and Akarty uh, she will line up in the other corner so those are the teams as selected unless there's been any late changes that's what has been uh, given to us here uh, today so it is the Premier Junior semi-finals between Roscommon and Tipperary is our first game and don't forget coming up at 2 o'clock the second encounter and that is, of course, between Armagh and Clare. And that game could be an interesting tussle. There's no question about that. But we're going to concern ourselves with the first one. Tip crowd after making the uh, journey to Ashburn and uh, looking to make the trip to uh, UPMC Nolan Park later on as well, of course, at half three. They are in action in the senior semi-final against Waterford. It's going to be a busy day if you're on the road, if you're a Tipperary Camogie fan, but a lot of people aiming to do that. And you can catch all the action here on the stream from this game between Tip and Roscommon. Coming up then, Armagh and Clare. That game is at 2 o'clock. There's also intermediate action getting underway in FPD Simple Stadium. Paul Jenkins is on that, and the you uh, 
get to see big games there between Derry and Kilkenny and Mead and Westmead, those games at one and three. And don't forget on TV then, from half three, you have Tipperary and Waterford and at half five, it's Cork and Galway. They're on RT2 and the RT player. So a full afternoon of Camogie action here and we're about to get underway. Man in the middle is Brian Carney from Kildare. He's helped up by Paul O'Neill, standby. Line is Max Malloy and Lisa Bannon is the fourth official. Lisa over on the far side will be trying to keep an eye on her for any of the subs. A few players trying to encroach already here in the early stage. A few position switches already. With Brian Kearney ready to throw the ball in. We're just gone 12 midday and it's tipped it. Get on the break and straight away it's full back or centre back. Sienna Walsh that uh, gets this ball moving but Anya O'Mara cuts it out on the far side and takes a good strong run up the uh, left hand side. She'll be attacking the goals to our right. Scoreboard into her left here. And that's the goal that Tipperary and it tends to be the scoring goal here in Dunham or Ashburn over the years that we've been here on streams. That Tipperary will be attacking in this uh, first half. So Ethan Malachny trying to get down to that ball, but it's uh, kicked away there. Good tenacious play by cornerback uh, Shauna Hanley. And it is uh, Sarah Dooley, the captain of Roscommon, that comes forward. Gets a nice little ball to Neve Watson. Watson half block, but gets it down into the corner. Looking for a little bit of movement there of uh, Claire Curley. Curley though, held off of that challenge, but it's picked up by Neve Fitzgerald. Fisher looking to get inside the Tipperary defence and uh, stepping back out to have a shot at this is centre forward Neve Watson it's on its way it's high and handsome and it's Ross Common to get the first strike off and that's a good start for them so a point here in the opening stages just a minute and ten seconds gone here on the clock in the stadium and it is Ross Common who are off the mark and that's a good start for them thankfully the mist that was falling in the last few minutes has uh, headed off with itself heavy rain up around these parts uh, overnight but the surface always in good nick here in Dunham Rash from ball towards Kelly but it uh, gets away from Gene Kelly it goes out a second time trying to get in there and win it though Sally Bulger and eventually it's Ross Common to come out with it again a couple of weeks now since Tipperary played the game so there might be a little bit of uh, Looking to shake off the cobwebs a little bit. And the strike going to come in from uh, Gene Kelly. It's on its way. It's high, is it? But it's out to the left and wide. And a uh, good play there by cornerback for Roscommon. They got a little bit of a knock on that. And uh, I think it just sent the trajectory of the shot off to the left. So it's a wide for Tipperary. A point though for Roscommon. On camera duty today with me, Danny Turley. He's keeping an eye on the action uh, here. And hopefully you get to enjoy it as I said a busy afternoon if you're following Komogi from 12 until about 7 o'clock this evening and it's all to decide who'll be in Crow Park on the 6th of August as the ball knocked down along the line here again but well read there by midfielder for Roscommon Rachel Fitzmaurice and really it's Roscommon that have settled the best here and they're trying to get it towards Watson she does that very well the St Dominic's player looking to get inside on her left hand side and she struck off her right but Brian Carney says that she overplayed the ball a little bit unlucky there possibly but Watson definitely a go-to player here. Sean O'Fallon, the captain, of course, of Ross Common. 12 points against Limerick in that victory by 13 points to 1-7. Ball played down the wing here, though, and it's a good ball for Tipperary. And Aoife Dwyer of Turles Arsby is looking to get on and redirect it over to the far side of the field. Now looking for a little bit of movement over forwards there. Of course, Tip had a massive win against Cavan and uh, Wicklow in their group stages, but haven't really had a tough ask and maybe Ross Common just putting it up to them here in the early stages here of course a lot of pressure on the uh, Tipperary Camogie setup, I suppose to have both teams in the All-Ireland Finals on the 6th of August but they have to get over the line first as that ball was trying to be played forward there towards Claude Horgan but it's uh, Ross Common doing it simple but then lost by Anya Mara has to go back and recover her own ball spirouettes out of that challenge and knocks it down along the wing over on the far side in front of the uh, go out there it's been minded over there by Tipperary at the minute David Sullivan of course the manager of Tip a man that uh, helps Scarif Agonlo to win Munster titles and uh, advance into the All-Ireland series a man from Lura is uh, now the manager of the Tipperary Premier Junior team and uh, Tip good persistence there over Thunder Ross common ball and eventually were fouled and a chance for the equaliser here 
Offering a bit of a run there was Katie Fitzgerald, but uh, I think Gene Kelly is focused on this now. Sends it towards those uprights, are the umpires conferring over that ball is up and over the bar. It's a point apiece, four and a half minutes gone. <coughs> Might be exactly what Tip need, just to settle into the game, a nice enough easy free. And the puck out to come. Back down there by Tip. Now that they've got the duck egg off the board, maybe they'll just start growing into this a little bit. Katie for sure now knocking it in the direction. Jean Kelly was in behind there waiting for the knockdown. She gets onto it good. She's a burst of pace, Jean Kelly. Settling on this and she got two on the bounce. Jean Kelly has. And just some of her senior experience starting to show here. Converted the free, came out then, got involved with a full forward there. She's where she's lining out, was in behind the defender if the ball did break and eventually just had the speed to get out in front of the full back and turn and put the ball over the bar. Five and a half minutes gone, two points to one. That'll settle tip, you would imagine. Walsh trying to get on that ball, but Watson is in there again. She got the score for uh, Ross Common. Ball is flicked away. And uh, in there, winning the back is Ellen Cunin from uh, the Silver Mines Club. It's uh, a foul, said Brian Kearney. Foul hand pass, and it's going to be a free for Ross Common. Very, there's no breeze at all, and uh, that's probably not helping the conditions. It's quite humid here, clammy, you'd probably call it, as that ball is knocked over the bar. And who else is that going to be? Only Sean O'Fallon. The four roads player. Two points apiece, seven minutes gone. And that puck out there from Aoife O'Brien just skids off the surface. <coughs> Sideline cut then. Taken by Russ Cummins. Sarah Dooley, the captain, trying to knock it in towards uh, Orla Conley. But it's uh, picked up by Aoife Dwyer. Knocking the ball inside. Now Kelly is on to this. Got inside. And she's well held up there though by the uh, full back. Gene Kelly is still there. Trying to get a shot off. Knocks the ball in. But Michaela Fallon is there to be able to knock that ball out here towards wing back Sarah Dooley. Ross Common living a bit dangerously. Gene Kelly probably had two opportunities at it. Good defensive play by uh, uh, Marie Carty. Stopped that initially. And then Gene probably didn't have enough power to trouble Michaela Fallon then the second shot. But they're still coming at it here and a chance for uh, Kira Brennan. The St. Killian's player, of course. Go on, Ellen. Go on, Ellen. Looking at uh, Ellen Cunine, looking to spin left and right, and knocking it towards the upright. Comes back off the upright. Fallon's got to be quick, but she's not quick enough. It's Claude Horgan going to try and get in there, but she's held up by Chloe White Lennon. Ross Common fighting with it now as much as possible there in their uh, defence. Well, they've done well there the last two attacks, but struggling to get it clear here. Eventually, centre-back Sally Bulger of Four Roads knocks it down, but ball falls into the hand here. Of Rachel Marr, and she gives it to Kira McKeown. McKeown knocking it long. Looked like a bit of a dunt in the back there and the Tipperary player, but Kearney allows the, the referee allowing the play to go on. Shauna Hanley out to the middle where it's picked up by Cunine. Cunine, lovely take by Kelly, but then it fell over a grasp, looking to get away from uh, the tensions of the full-back there, Marie Carty. Kelly's still going short in the grip and the hurl across her body, up and over the bar. Good score. Tip of three, Gene Kelly is three. Eight and a half minutes gone, tip lead 3 2. So, helter skelter there around that uh, 65 metres in. And eventually, it was worked to the lady that had the initial shot that created all that fuss in Gene Kelly. Looking like we were getting a bit of attention to Katie Fitzgerald. Love to know when someone could tell me. I was looking in the annals to see when Tipperary and Roscommon last played in a Camogie match. Not sure it has happened too often, but it's happening here today in the Premier Junior semi final where that uh, puck out has been interrupted by Aoife Malachny trying to drive it forward there. A bit of a over pull there by Fitzgerald, but the referee allowed the play to continue. Looked like a drop ball. Not sure it was a hand pass, but it's picked up by Sarah Dooley. 
Eventually uh, knocked away from her by McLaughlin. Trying to get it in here towards Gene Kelly as the miss starts to come down a little bit again. It's going to interfere, I'd imagine, with vision out there. Watson, the first score of the game. And the opening score for Ross Common knocks it into the middle. Goes over the head, though, of Neve Fitzgerald. It might work out, though, to uh, get it to Sinead Mannion. Mannion got a little bit of a knock to the side of her head. And the referee just going to be careful there because she did get a knock to the side of the head. Don't think Anton was deliberate about it. All accidental. It remains three points to two. Ten minutes gone. It's the Glen Dimplex. Premier Junior Camogie Championship semi-final between Tipperary and Roscommon. Coming up at 2 o'clock, Arma and Clare also here at this venue. At 1 o'clock in FPD Simple Stadium, you have the clash between Derry and Kilkenny. And then at 3, it's Mead and Westmead. At half 3 on RT2 and the RT player, it is Tipperary and Waterford followed at 5.30 by Cork and Galway so feast of Camogie action either here live on the Camogie YouTube channel or on RT2 then she coming out with the rook and winning that our Ross Common with her captain Shauna Fallon down into the corner it goes but it's a good bit of play there by Kira Ryan here it all, lost that ball, trying to get in there and uh, hold off the attention, Ashing Sheedy, or uh, daughter of Liam. Ball breaks over on the far side in favour of Tipperary and pirouetted well out of two tackles there. As this ball played in towards Kelly, as you can see that miss now coming down again, as I imagine it's going to affect the trajectory a little bit of the ball and also a bit of vision as the shot comes in. It's gone out though to the left and wide, the shot from... Uh, Kira Brennan. Kira was the one that really got that move on the way. Kira of the St. Killian's Club, of course, on the Offaly Tipperary border. Ball breaks for Watson. The other number 11 now. Got the opening score, getting away here from Walsh. And she's still going and she's a burst of pace right down the middle. Who's going to come and meet her? Outside, there's an opportunity here for this ball to be played off to Fallon. Also waiting on the opportunity here is Mannion. Ball breaks out towards Mannion, but it's good resolute defence by Tipperary. Have they done enough? Trying to get in there, Walsh again to disrupt it. Also in there as well is Ryan. Looking to get involved in the action there. Shauna Fallon just standing outside the rook in case anything happens, but it's tipped to get it away down along the far side. Played on there again by uh, Kira Brennan. But it's turned over by Chloe White-Lennon. Trying to knock it out to uh, centre-back Sally Bulger of Kilkenny Blood. Ball is up on the uh, inside the D now. Brian Carney letting the play continue. But it might work out for Ross Common to try to get away there. But their full forward ended up on the ground. That's clear Curly, But not in the crew and said the referee. He was quite happy with how it went. And it's knocked forward here towards the tip number 10, Aoife Dwyer. Ball breaks and works out for Katie Fitzgerald. Back inside it goes now for Aoife Dwyer, the Turles Sarsfields player. Got a little nudge there, I think, and a knock on the, the hand. Yeah, referee spotting that. And it's going to be a free in, I'd imagine. It should be meat and drink for Jean Kelly. Someone of her calibre. She of Aerog and Akarty. And this is a chance to put Tip two points in front. Puts that ball up and over the bar. Does Jean Kelly. She's the one shooting the lights out here at the minute. Hard to believe when you look at the conditions out there that today is the 22nd of July. I think this time last year we were coming out of a, a heat wave. but Plenty of warmth here today but... Not fun looking out in that conditions. Nice puck out from Michaela Fallon. Oh, found Watson. Fitzgerald knocking it on with the help of uh, Sarah Dooley. And it's Ryan knocks it out here towards Rachel Marr. That's a good play there by the Roscommon number eight, Orla Connolly. And the referee says that she was being fouled by Kira Brennan. And a lot of people were expecting that Tipperary were going to win this easily enough, but at the moment it's tight enough still. Quarter of an hour nearly gone. 
And that free taken by Sally Bulger from the Four Roads Club. Knocking up into the corner where Watson loses her hurl. But uh, tips wing back. Kira Mikko is able to spin around and play the ball into the middle. Where doing quite well there is Claire Stakelham. Of course, Claire, as he said, from the Holy Cross Pally Car Club and related to the Mars. And of course, Teclan Hannon. Of course, unfortunately, misses out for Limerick tomorrow in their All Ireland final. Claire, a judge should have fouled that ball and it's going to be a free in. And I imagine no one else is going to take it, only Sean O'Fallon. Got 12 points the last day against Limerick. Nine of them from place balls. She already got one here today. Chance to make it a one point game with a quarter of an hour gone. Gets it up good and high, and it's only one place over the bar. You give her the chance, and she does put them away. So this game tighter than we expected. Four points to three. Quarter of an hour gone, and the puck out to come from Efo Brain. Over to the far side it goes. Gets a bit of a strong bounce off the ground there. Looking to get in control of it. Looked like uh, Tipperary's number 12 Claire's taken him, but the ball has been turned over again by. Ross Common, their half back line playing quite well. Looks like Brendan was charging there a little bit, but the ref allowed the play to continue. Ross Common's number nine, Rachel Fitzmaurice, gets it out though, and it's out to the number six, Sally Bulger. Bulger didn't look, but up along the wing, she's expecting a bit of a run, but it's uh, the Tipperary defenders that have responded quicker to that. And eventually, it's going to end up here in position nearly by Rachel Marr. She eventually had to fight Sean O'Fallon for it and knocks it over to the far side. Tip now, could have an opportunity of an overlap here. Try to get strong onto that ball there with Stakelham, but the ball breaks away from her. And have to say the rest coming half back line playing very, very well. Driving onto it. Katie Fitzgerald hits the deck, gets a flick outside here. Referee allowing the play to emerge. And Aoife Malachny was trying to get in there and win it, but Ross Common looked to have got it forward, but it's been turned over again there by Walsh. Back it goes uh, to Malachny from a long distance out, having a shot, but it looks like it's tailed to the left. And that's where it has gone. So, Tip put a lot of purpose out there, but finding that hard to get beyond that uh, Ross Common half back line on occasion. Puck out come then from Michaela Fallon, the Puck Fodder champion in Ross Common in 2022. And she finds a player on the far side, it's Anya Mara, and Anya Mara is well able to slalom her run, and she's still going Anya Mara, heading on now to the top of the D. Looking to get a shot off. It'd be something else if she did, but she's pulled it to the right and wide and maybe there should have been just someone on her shoulder. But when she is able to set off, she can take off as right, but just the shot then wasn't maybe the right option at that moment. And she records Russ Cummins' first wide. Aoife O'Brien looking for options. Kira McKeo giving her an option over here on the dressing room side. Uh, the fine clubhouse, of course, here at Dunhamore Ashburn. That we're in underneath the shelter of here at the minute. The Brarian Russ Common here, of course, in the Glen Dimplex Premier Junior Camogie Championship semi final. Down towards Jean Kelly. Lovely catch in the air. And she turns inside her marker there, getting away from Marie Carty. Kelly looking to flick the ball inside, but Fallon is underneath this and able to flick it out. Just a little bit dangerous there now, and that little bit of AstroTurf that's in front of the goal in these conditions could skate very easy off it. And Tip of uh, kept the pressure on here now. Aoife Dwyer looking to get inside. Referee said, though, that she was initially fouled. That's the chance for Jean Kelly. Brian Carney telling the uh, Roscommon player to mind how high that she is uh, putting her hurl in. So a chance now for Jean Kelly, just being told by the linesman here where to put it. Jean Kelly with all of tip score so far just outside the 45 sends it towards that left hand upright it's up and over the bar the crowd like it and Jean Kelly from Aero Ganicarty makes it 5 points to 3 puck out from Fallon out to the middle it goes knocked down there by uh, her namesake Shauna and captain played in by Aoife Malachny lovely ball along the ground Tipper coming out of strong here again Aoife Dwyer it's up and over the bar and that was a quick fire scores from Tipperary there 
two Fallons were involved from a Roscommon point of view, but it broke down off there. Hurlands getting on to it. McLaughlin, lovely ball to Dwyer. And she turned and put it over the bar. And someone else is on the scoreboard other than Gene Kelly. And it now is Aoife Dwyer. 20 minutes gone here, 6-3. to three. And Tip just putting a bit of daylight between themselves and Roscommon now. Over on the far side, winning that ball for Tip is Clodagh Horgan. Down into the wing it goes. She heard the shout from Gene Kelly. Kelly is there. Slalom left and right. Look at the short and the grip. Putting it across the goal. It'll be some score if it went over the bar. It's gone just out to the left and wide. Kelly with the talent she has. She will shoot. Once it's in around that 20 metre line. And she knows her angle. Ball out here by the goalkeeper, Mik Michaela Fallon, towards uh, Nifa Sherl, but the St. Dominic's player couldn't keep the ball on the field. Ball tried to take a quick one there, and I'm not sure that should have been allowed. The ball was still moving when she put it down, but anyway, play is allowed to continue, and it has been turned over from a temporary point of view. Ball knocked here now towards our latest score. Aoife Dwyer really starting to come into this game, Aoife Dwyer now, but the ball was thrown there, says the referee. And... Turnover. And the free taken by centre back Sally Bulger. Shouted for Watson, and Watson is on the ball now. 20 metres out, looking to step in, will favour a shot off her right hand side, but she decides to go left. It's dropping in, it's a dangerous enough one. Flicked away there by Sheedy. Ryan has got to be careful, and eventually knocks down the field there. Just in these conditions now, a touch like that, but lovely strong run by Dwyer now. Dwyer looking to get around the marker and play this ball inside. Kelly's gone for a bit of a run now. Fallon's got to be careful. Kelly's coming in on top, but Michaela Fallon is out and knocks it out here to the far side. Where it's uh, picked up by uh, Orla Conley. The but, uh, tipper onto it there. It's Janet Walsh giving it to Ellen Cunneen. Rain is just getting a little bit heavier now. It was a miss, but it's now blowing down into uh, Michaela Fallon's face and all the rest common faces as they come up the field. Nearly, nearly. Ball was allowed to play. That could have been a lot harder. The crowd were oon and on here as uh, Rachel Fitzmaurice lost control. And then the tip player was coming in tight and close. It could have been a lot more a set of a uh, risk of injury there, but uh, thankfully not in the crowd as this ball was knocked long. Claire Curley just wasn't able to get beyond Sheedy there and eventually ball is played out there by Aoife O'Brien. Tip now starting to sense maybe they could go for the juggler here. Opportunity for Stakelham, shortening the grip on the hurl, driving it in and over the bar. And after all the mess and I suppose that was going on there, let's get it up and over. And that settled the old nerve. Good score. And the two wing forwards as they're named in the programme now on the scoreboard. Tipperary, no missing, up and over the bar, and as I said, that miss now got a little bit heavier. So it's a pity to be playing in conditions like this, but very little we can do about it, of course. We live in Ireland, <laughs> we're on a little island off the west coast of Europe, out in the middle of the Atlantic. And while it might be warm, it's just one of those clammy, clammy days. But hey, the girls are not going to mind. They're trying to get to Crow Park on the 6th of August. It's seven points at three, and Tip are putting down a marker here now. Ross Common, got to be careful here. As another ball is sent in along the turf here now. Jean Kelly looking to get involved. McLaughlin as well, looking to be in a bit of trouble with Shauna Hanley, but she's extricated herself very well out with that, I have to say. Oh, doesn't play a great ball now. There's a three and two situation here. Dwyer elects to go for the shot from distance. Up and over the bar. And Aoife Dwyer is becoming a bit of a force in this game for Tipperary. And now stretching out the lead. Eight points to three. The Turles Sarsfields player really has grown into this game. And you would feel now Ross Common need to get a score. Just to settle... Taken on board there, Sarah Dooley. Oh, that was high there, I thought, from Brennan. And I think Brian Carney will be no doubt. I think she might have got away with one earlier on. I think there's a definite yellow card coming here. Dooley coming out with that, but the hurl was straight up into her top.
top of her chest, shoulder area. I don't think it was that low. <laughs> Sarah, is she trying to tell Brian Carney it's going to be a definite yellow card for her? Well, Kira Brennan with the first yellow card of the game, 25 minutes gone as uh, Ross coming out. You'd feel need to get a score, but all of a sudden, tip half back line just started to get to grips with uh, some of the main players for Ross Common and. Uh, I was going to say balls are going to hand just as it fell out of the fingers there of uh, Katie Fitzgerald. <coughs> Ball was played forward there towards Gene Kelly but Marie Carty took it out over the sideline and uh, linesman has uh, given a sideline cut here that Gene Kelly will take. Referee just telling Jean to play to the whistle. Eight points to three. Mist has uh, drifted off here again now. Hopefully you're enjoying the action. I said a busy, busy day of Camogie semi-finals. The intermediate ones getting underway at one o'clock with uh, Derry and Kilkenny Mead and Westmead at three. There with Paul Jenkins live on the uh, Camogie YouTube channel. From uh, FPD. Simple Stadium when we talk about Simple Stadium we talk about Tipperary and Tipperary are busy busy today they're here in Dunmore Ashburn and they're also in UPMC Nolan Park of course big game coming up in the seniors semi-finals at 3.30 with uh, Tip and Waterford and then it's Cork and Galway at half five they're on RT2 and the RT player 8 points to 3 here 26 minutes gone ball breaks and a bit of a rook form and Brian Carney thinking about blowing the whistle Man of uh, the St. Lawrence's Club in County Kildare. But it's uh, Kira Brennan looking to get forward. Lost her hurl and she dropped it, says the referee. And then she, it was a throw pass as well. She's not happy with Brian Carney. Don't think they're going to be on the Christmas card list to each other. <laughs> so a free out for centre back Sally Bulger. We'll be keeping an eye, of course, on things in Crow Park tomorrow. She of Kilkenny Heritage. And as the ball breaks, so in favour of Anna Campbell. Anna is your barista in and around the uh, St. Dominic's area, so if you're down that part of Roscommon, I'm sure she might be serving you a coffee somewhere. And she's trying to get on this ball here now, but uh, it was a decent enough passing, just not enough conviction. And straight away... It's a breakout from the tip defence. Can they make a count down the other end? It's uh, eight points to three. Three minutes to the half-time break, but it's a danger player for us coming on your Mar. The last time she did a run like this, she had a wide. She's going to play this ball inside, though. Looking for Curly. Curly's held off that ball, though, by Sheedy. Sheedy looking to break out. Ashing looks like she was fouled, definitely, and it's going to be a free out, says the referee. And it's good play there by the Port Royal lady. It's going to be Efo O'Brien. It's going to take this free out then from the famed Cashel King Cormac Club. He for Brino's potential to leave this on the other 20 metre line. Doesn't get that far though, probably with the wet hurley. It might break though. Ross Common just a little bit tentative there, trying to get it up. And it's well done now. There's a bit of an overlap here. Ball left behind there by Brennan. Look at that, get around on it, then is uh, Claude Horgan dropping it in, umpires off the upright, there to get inside, Kelly's in there, shot, got out to the right and wide. It's uh, Aoife Malachny that eventually had that shot off, but it's goes down as a wide. You fancy either McLaughlin or Kelly when that ball was breaking there, came off the upright. At 8 points to 3 it remains, 29 minutes gone. Tip, as I said, with that bit of uh, light now between themselves and Ross Common. Took a while to shake off the cobwebs. It's been a few weeks, of course, since they played their last game, Tipperary, and probably just were a bit shaky getting off. Ross Common, of course, only playing recently against Limerick. Fine battle that they had with them and coming out on top as uh, Kira Brennan plays this ball forward. Falls out of the grass there of uh, Rachel Fitzmaurice. Gene Kelly leaving it behind her a little bit, trying to be hooshed off that ball there. By uh, Ross Cummins midfielder, Rachel Fitzmaurice, and the athlete player 
is judged to have been fouled, said the referee. A bit of a change taking place. Positionally, it seems as uh, time heading towards Splashdown now. Not a great free. It's very tight to the line. It's going to be a temporary ball. And, uh, Roscommon players just suffering a little bit out there. Ball into the middle. Where it's uh, taken on by Ellen Cunneen. Into the middle it goes where Kira Ryan is standing. So two Silver Mines players linking up and giving it off here now to Holy Cross Bally Cals. Claire Stakelham got a fine score. The last score of the game. Trying to get it at the third time of asking. Lost it. Trying to get back there and win it again. Ross Common flooding back their uh, corner forward Sinead Mannion. She might be wearing 15 but I don't think he's played too much of the game up there. As uh, cornerback trying to come out with it there was uh, Chloe White-Lennon. And the referee says that she was fouled and it's a chance here for the clearance to come from centre-back Sally Bulger, I'd imagine. Bulger puts it up and knocks it down the left-hand side, goes over the head still a little bit and that's the problem for Ross Common in the last 10 minutes. Just the passes haven't been finding their players, especially up in their half-forward line. Tip have really got the grips back there. Mara Walsh and McHugh really doing the needful and Sheedy as well at full-back. Oh, lovely play and that's a pull of the jersey. Brian Kearney, linesman, didn't give it. But it's going to be a sideline ball that came off the Common player. But there was a definite stretch of the Gaelic armour, Tipperary Camogie jersey. Gene Kelly with a cut. Another pull of the jersey inside. But Brian Kearney decides, that's it, you've seen enough. Eight points to three. And Tipperary with that burst of scores there. They got four on the bounce. Uh, Jean Kelly with her last free on 19. And then they had two points from Aoife Dwyer. Sandwiching an effort from Claire Stakelham. And that was uh, the reason how they've pulled it out to an 8.3 lead. The Roscommon and Tip Crow trying to get behind both of their teams here. As they win underneath us at Dunamore Ashburn. But it has really been Tip in the last uh, 10 minutes. That have uh, really started to own the ball. And for Roscommon unfortunately they just can't get some of their main protagonists on the scoreboard here and they've only got the three points and one the opening score of the game from Neve Watson which was a fine score indeed and then two place balls from Shauna Fallon she of course got 12 against Limerick out of their 13 Tipper just not fouling and that's how Shauna Fallon is probably not getting on the scoreboard whereas for Tipperary the place balls from Jean Kelly have been a factor but she's also got two from play along with the two from Dwyer and the one from Stakelham so it is the Glen Dimplex Premier Junior All-Ireland semi-final between Tipperary and Roscommon it's the favourites Tipperary that are in front here by five at half time but it's still very much all to play for to see who will be in Crow Park on the 6th of August do stick with us
And you're welcome back here to Dunmore Ashburn. This, of course, the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Premier Junior Camogie Championship semi final between Roscommon and Tipperary. Tipperary lead by eight points to three. Be interesting to see what uh, Keen Rhino and Hardiman have said to Roscommon and David Sullivan has said to Tipperary. Thankfully, the uh, conditions overhead gets getting a little bit brighter. Don't forget getting underway in uh, FPD Simple Stadium at 1 o'clock is uh, Derry and Kilkenny in the intermediate semi final. You can watch that also on another link here on the Komogi YouTube channel. And uh, you can pick up at 3 o'clock then Mead and Westmead. And then the senior games are on RT2 and also on the Flair. And they get underway at 3.30 with Tip and uh, Waterford. And at 5.30, it's uh, Cork and Galway. Looks like, I think, is it Roscommon have made changes there. I think they've taken off number 14 and 15. And I think 18 and 22 are in. Haven't heard any announcement here, so... Fortunately, it does look like it was the... That's where it came from, yeah. And then looking at the rest coming, number 18. Mairead Lowen is in and Tara Nocton. They're in. As uh, Ross Common come on the attack. And referee, Brian Carney says that's a free in and it's going to be uh, an opportunity for Shauna Fallon. She doesn't miss Manny, so I'm not going to put the hex on her, but... She's 45 metres out in front of the goals. She's pulled it, would you believe? That's a bad scenario for Ross Common point of view. You need all of those, you were thinking. A bit of a let off there for Tipperary. I did put the hex on her for she. She is one of the fine free takers in the Camogie game. As Ross Common tried to keep some of the pressure on Tipperary now, once the ball is down there. That's uh, Ellen Conneen, held up there by substitute uh, Maria Lohan. Trying to keep it going there, Stakelham. Trying to drive on to it now, Aoife Dwyer. Got two points and she's fouled and it'll be Jean Kelly that'll make the way out. 45 metres out into the goal on our right-hand side. Fine set up here, of course, in Dunhamar Ashburn has been used quite often by the ladies' games. I think there hasn't been a year in the last six that I haven't been here at some point for uh, a match. And uh, Dunhamar Ashburn, good supporters of... Women's GA. As Jean Kelly stands over this. 45 metres out then. Attacking the Roscommon goal. A good trajectory on it. But she's pulled it to the right and wide. So our two famed free takers have uh, hit a wide each. The start of this second half. And it remains 8 points to 3. Puck out from Michaela Fallon to her centre-back Sally Bulger. has been a lot of ball she has Sally in this game. Ellen Canine trying to get in there, Fitzgerald in there as well, but it's uh, the number nine, Rachel Fitzmaurice. Lohan trying to get in there, only on, of course, as a substitution. Bit of a wild strike there, but Brennan drives out with the St. Killian's player now. Already in the notebook of uh, Brian Carney, trying to get forward. Thought she was fouled there, but play allowed to continue. Looks like another foul there on Stakel and pull arm, but uh, Jean Kelly is eventually in possession of it here, trying to get away from White Lennon. Tight enough angle as she met up for the free... Yes, she has. So 33 minutes gone and extends the lead now to six points. Ball knocked out here. And it looks like coming across to win it there quite well. Kira McHugh knocks it back into the middle. Well, it's a Roscommon player that reacts the quickest, but it's taken away there off Sarah Dooley's hurl. And it's uh, McLaughlin looking to pirouette in. Bit of a tussle coming in on her. She gets a flick here to Stakelham. Gets it eventually under control. Looking for the ball there is uh, Claude Horgan. Ball goes back but the referee says that there was uh, some element of a foul play there by Tipperary somehow. <coughs> a 
Don't forget, coming up at 2 o'clock, uh, Claire and Armagh. Armagh looking to get into the All-Ireland Final for the fourth year in a row. Of course, won the uh, COVID Final in 2020 in a cracking game against Cavan. We've lost the last two, though. Ball is down towards Anna Campbell. Giving it off now to Orla Connolly. Is that a score for us? Comment it is. The last got a score on the 15th minute. 34 minutes gone. And uh, that's a good score. Point from Connolly. Good bit of play there. Eventually to work that ball into her position. And she struck it confidently over the bar. Puck out to come then from Aoife O'Brien. Hasn't been too busy in this game. As she tries to find Aoife Dwyer over on the far side. Dwyer got two points on 20 and 24. Gives it. The ball is flicked inside. Here's a chance on Malachny. Left her behind her unfortunately. Or otherwise she was giving the eyes to the goalkeeper. Gives it back out. Dwyer shortens the grip a little bit. But pulled it out to the right and wide. White just starting to creep up now a little bit. Considering we had very few... In general, ball not a great one. Out to Gene Kelly. Kelly though blocked down there. Might work out though in a break for Tipperary towards uh, Claude Horgan. Horgan playing it back in. Fallon underneath it though. Confident goalkeeper. Knocks it out here towards Lohan. The sub that was brought on at half time. But the break works for Tipperary and Gene Kelly is the one that's orchestrating an awful lot of it. Plays the pass back out here. To Sienna Walsh. And Walsh having a long strike at this. Ball is dropping inside though. Could go anywhere. Brennan could be coming onto it. Also staking him. Fallon blocks it away. It's taking a grip there. And it was a good shot. But a good save by Michaela Fallon. In the Roscommon goal. Just keeps tip at manageable distance for Roscommon. As Watson come down. The ball though goes one way. She went the other and it's going to be cleared up by Kira Ryan. Out into the middle it goes now. Looking for a bit of movement there out of Katie Fitzgerald. But the ball breaks to her last point scorer, Orla Connolly. Connolly getting a free. Going to have a shot off as Rachel Fitzmaurice driving it in. Referee's going to call it back though. That did go wide. He was given the advantage. A shot to nothing I suppose from Fitzmaurice. And a chance here for Fallon now. And I think for someone of her capabilities needs this now. Maybe just to settle the nerve of missing the one early on. This goes over the bar. It's keeping Ross Common, as he said, in touch. <coughs> Tipped on all the things. I've only created one goal opportunity in this game. Dangerous ball. It's in. It's right just under the angle. Knocked away there by Aoife O'Brien. She did very, very well. And it's uh, taken away by Rachel Maher. Ross Common have won it back though. Opportunity here. Lone has got all the way forward though, but it's eventually gone in over the top. Looked like there was been a foul committed and another foul on the goalkeeper there coming out. I thought Anna Campbell was being held as that ball came in. But then she did foul Leaf O'Brien as she came out. Takes the free quickly and knocks it up with Ross Common going to return it with uh, Orla Conley. Down the wing it goes. Watson got the opening score of the game. Looking to get inside the attentions of uh, the tip defence there. But Ryan did that very, very well. <coughs> but the referee is uh, holding up the play. I think he saw a little bit of a pull there he's not happy with. Change coming for Tipperary. It looks like Aoife Malachny is going to be replaced by Emer Moyles. A little bit of a change in height differential in there. Fourth official over there today, Lisa Bannon, Max Malloy and Paul O'Neill on the lines and Brian Carney is our man in the middle. Oh, it's Ross Common with Fallon. Playing the ball across. John, of course, the captain of this Ross Common team. Nine points to four. Ball knocked over the head. Brennan looking to get on to this now. Kelly there to help her out. But two Ross Common players in around her. Kelly tried to snaffle it from the back and she did. Gene Kelly purring left and then right. Loses the ball. Got a push there. 
No foul. Jean Kelly, though, juggling with it, holding off the attentions of centre back Sally Bulger. And then it's Aoife Dwyer giving it off to Ellen Conneen as she turned to put it over the bar. She has. And again, after that little bit of messy play, eventually Ellen Conneen was in a bit of space to be able to turn and put it over the bar. 10 points to 4, 9 minutes gone in the second half. And it is, of course, the Camogie Association coverage of the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Premier Junior Championship semi final between Roscommon and Tipperary. Ball breaks over on that far side. Number 22, of course, that's on for Roscommon is Tara Nocton. They come on at half time. And you can also see there, maybe in camera at number 18. And uh, that is Maria Lohan. <laughs> Tipperary have turned over that play over there. Tipperary taking the free and got a little bit messy but eventually they keep it alive and active over this side of the field trying to get on that ball is uh, Claude Horgan but she's been well taken off it there by the Roscommon defender that being uh, their wing back there their flying wing back Anya O'Mara who's played quite a good game for them and she kept Horgan off that ball and it's going to be a free that Sally Bulger you'd imagine will try and leave in on the D at least she has a good strike on that now 20 metres out, ball of the player inside for Ross Common and picking it up as Fallon here. Got a little nudge, gets a little flick, but knocks it out to the right and wide. And I think Shauna Fallon might feel a little bit aggrieved there. I thought she definitely had a pull on the arm. Two wides out for Sean in the second half, two points on the board, 10 points to four. And they really, from a Ross Common point of view, they need Shauna. Knocking the balls over the bar to keep them in touch. Another change is there about to happen and it's a Tipperary one. It looks like uh, Rachel Marr is being replaced and uh, coming on is the number 18. Now, I heard before the game that might not be Nessa Murray, so just have to try and find that out. But Rachel Marr is off here after 42 minutes. Ball into the middle. Dwyer wasn't able to get on it, but it's uh, the number eight, Arla Conley for Roscommon. Ball is going to be struck in. It's a dangerous enough ball now. Got to be aware of it. But O'Brien, oh, she's dangerous. Trying to guide that to the end line. And now there's a little bit of butter in there. And there's a Roscommon player with it. Fallon has it. Then Watson is trying to get it. Roscommon player was on the ground. Don't know whether the referee saw it. And in that, Watson trying to get a swing at it. Puts it up and over the bar. And Eve O'Brien probably made that a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. I think she thought it would get to the end line. But uh, Neve Watson got the opening score of the game. Gets another one on the board after 43 minutes here. And it's just making it a little bit uncomfortable for Tipperary. So 10 points to 5. This game, as we said, probably a little bit closer than some people might have expected. But Roscommon coming in on the back, of course, of that fine win against Limerick and wins over Tyrone and Loud in the group. Tip haven't played in a few weeks. And they easily accounted for Wicklow and Cavan. It's a little bit more of a sterner test here from Roscommon. Tipperary haven't really created the goal chances either. They got five against Wicklow, three against Cavan. Have only got really one shot off. And uh, that was well saved by Michaela Fallon. That came about uh, seven, eight minutes ago. ball into the middle but it's uh, well read by the Roscommon defence but uh, Aoife Dwyer is on to it now again who's gone inside opportunity to get across there referee and see anything wrong there two players going for the ball and it's Roscommon that have uh, turned it over looking to 
charge forward with it now is uh, Ross Commons. Rachel Fitzmaurice, she was being fouled, said the referee, and it's going to be a chance now to deliver another long ball in. Ross Common got to start making some of this territory tell, though. A couple of wides and a couple of short balls. Ball is inside where Ashley Sheedy now has got to be careful. Two Ross Common players on her back there. Watson is in there. Also, Anna Campbell. Ball is kicked out, though. Tip defence out just uh, struggling that a little bit. Watson going to have another strike, but it's well blocked there by Kira McHugh. Watson still on the ball, though. Ten points to five. Ross, come and get a point here from Fallon. It could be interesting. It's over the bar. Shauna Fallon making up for the two earlier misses from a very tight angle. Now making it with a quarter of an hour to go. It's a right in the melting pot at ten points to six here. Tip just gone into their shells that little bit. And just to confirm, it is Nessa Murray that is uh, on there for Rachel Marr. As Gene Kelly gets on this ball now, maybe the protagonist that might get things going. But Ross Commons' half back line have started really to strengthen into this game. And tip, tip forwards find it hard to get beyond the ball over here towards Lone. Can she get a touch on it? She didn't, but she maybe put off Sianet. Ball breaks again. Walsh in there trying to get a flick and a Brennan in there as well. But Ross Common are the ones that are coming with a bit of a charge here now. And it's their centre back Sally Bulger. Knocking it down here towards Watson. Gets a lovely flick up into her hand. Watson looking to turn inside now. Gets away from Ryan. From a tight enough angle. Gone to the left and wide. That's another missed chance. Two Ross Common players standing on the edge of the square. No one marking them. And Watson decided to go for the shot. Maybe not the right option. And this game again, as I said, just getting that a little bit tighter here. You'd have to say Ross Common have had three wides since the halftime break that really should have been scores. And they're letting tip off here a little bit. Coming driving onto this ball now is Orla Connolly. Growing in confidence, there's no question about it. Our Ross Common. Connolly going from distance. Top down by O'Brien. She did that very, very well. That would have made it a one score game, but it's back out here towards Lone. Looking to drive forward now. Lovely ball inside. Touch along the ground. That's uh, thought it might have been a free opportunity there for us coming, but play allowing to continue. Anna Campbell. Ball is knocked out. Neve Fitzgerald trying to get on it. Tip defence there, trying to work hard on it now. They're under a lot of pressure in the last few minutes, but looking to drive out with it is uh, Sheedy, and she won her free. And in fairness, to uh, Ashling, got her eyes on the ball, got down over it, drove out with it, and won the free. And it's just maybe something to tip defence need. A little bit of a breather here, with uh, 13 minutes to go. And uh, Senna Walsh has just asked for a score. That's what she feels needs to lift some of the pressure. And I think as a defence, you would love now to see your forward step up and get a point. But uh, that ball going astray. Tip just seemed to have gone down 10% and Roscommon definitely have lifted their game by about 20. They may be sniff an opportunity, but Brennan coming on to this ball here now. Play advantage being given to Tipperary. Brennan putting the head down, getting away from her marker. Brennan driving it forward and driving it to the right and wide. Had the advantage, but... Uh, that's a wide. And it's maybe something that Tip didn't need just at this minute in time to still lead by four. But it's just getting a little bit closer for them. Looks like number nine, Katie Fitzgerald, is going to be replaced here. And uh, number 19, I think, is the one that's coming on. That's uh, Amy Cross from Cashel King Cormacks. So I will say for David Sullivan, he's not afraid to ring some of the changes. And there's been a few subs in the last couple of minutes. Ball breaks now from Tipperary point of view. One-handed trying to keep that in play. Walsh did it very, very well. Knocking it up along, along the line here towards Horgan. Horgan trying to battle away from the Ross Common players that she'd been tracked all the way there by Chloe White-Lennon. Driving the ball into the corner. It's Kelly from a tight angle. Knocking it in. And it's in the back of the net, would you believe? And they're just the things that sometimes fall... 
Gene Kelly knocking the ball in and it just got away from the goalkeeper and in a very tight angle into the back of the net. Heartbreak for Ross Common when you consider what they've done with Gene Kelly. Maybe relieving some of the pressure on tip but here come Ross Common driving forward now. Trying to take it on. Rachel Fitzmaurice. They knew they're in the game. That goal just wipes out some of the effort that they've done and it might just give a bit of a lift to the temporary defence because they're the ones that kept this team in the game in the last while lovely clearance there from cornerback Lisa Cahill Lisa of course of uh, the fame Cahill's in the Kilroan McDonough club as this ball gets forward trying to win it back there was uh, Amy Cross goes in at a second time to have a bite at it but uh, full back for Ross Common, Marie Carty trying to do her best in there to win that ball. And uh, Ross Common fighting all the way. Orla Connolly, I have to say, being impressed by Orla Connolly and Rachel Fitzmaurice in the second half, have done everything to take the game to Tipperary from the middle of the field. They really got on top, and maybe that's why there's been a bit of a change there in the middle for Tip. 10 minutes. The goal just coming fortuitously enough from Cross. I'd say she would look, there was no question about it, she was going for the point, but it just dipped short and maybe Michaela Fallon thought the ball was going over the bar as well and then it just trips into that angle. And uh, it gives a little bit of daylight that Tipperary badly needed it, I think, in a way, because Roscommon were coming hunting had missed opportunity, but you just feel it going down to closing stages and there was a goal in it. Anything then could happen, but now seven points is a lot to ask in the next nine minutes. Bit of sunshine that's trying to break through, blinding a little bit and mist falling as well. It's not ideal conditions, but two teams giving it their all here and it's a lot closer than the 110 to six points, says on the scoreboard. Ross Common fighting to the nail here to try and get back to Crow Park. Haven't been there since 2015. But it's uh, Aoife Dwyer. It's had a big game for Tipperary. Definitely will be in the hunt for player of the match award. Knocked down. Here's Gene Kelly coming on to this. Second time. Back at the net. And all of a sudden, the gaps are just opening. And has the Ross Common resolve now been put to bed? But Gene Kelly, using her senior experience there, got in on that knockdown, took it on, and decided here, not tapping this over the bar, bottom corner, and Gene Kelly, well... When you were scoring two goals and uh, six points in uh, an All-Ireland semi-final, you're definitely in the running for player of the match here. But uh, you'd have to feel for Ross Common definitely in this game at 10 points to six. Had an opportunity themselves to go 10-7. It was batted down by Eve O'Brien and eventually that ball was worked up the field. It was Gene Kelly's shot that dropped into the net. And that just probably put the kibosh on it from a Roscommon point of view here's Kelly again now dropping this ball in over the top referee said that she was being fouled trying to get on that ball was uh, Emer Miles of course that's Emer come on of course for Aoife Malachny 13-14 minutes ago So free for Gene Kelly. 2-6 already to her name. One for two just goal and then the second one a lovely corner forward effort. Coming on to the break and driving it low to the bottom right of Michaela Fallon's goal and Michaela hasn't done a whole lot wrong here today. But it looks like it's going to be heartbreak again for Ross Common. Gene Kelly standing over this. Send it towards that right hand upright is it tailing around enough. The crowd like it and so does the umpire. Gene Kelly now has 2-7 to her name. Two two in this uh, second half and two one have come in the last four minutes. And all of a sudden now Tip just uh, are finding every nook and cranny, every little touch. Whereas five minutes ago, this lady in particular was making it difficult for them in Rachel Fitzmaurice, knocking it down along the wing now. Watson trying to get onto this ball out in front of the tip defence there. All of a sudden, Ross Common runners though are not as needful as the once were. Looking for a shout though is Nefis Gerald. Watson going to go for her own score. Drops it in and over the bar. 
Neve Watson is a fine Camogie player. That's two points in this second half. One and 43, one and 53. That spell there around the 43rd minute, they got two points and narrowed the gap. And uh, they were asking questions of Tiff. Is Tiff going to make a change? It looks like uh, they're calling off Sir Claire Stakelham. And it looks like number 21, Searsha McGrath, is coming in. So barring some miraculous recovery, Tipperary will be in Crow Park no matter what on All-Ireland final day as this ball is knocked in and over the bar by Ellen Conneen. It was over the bar and they felt that she was saying that it was but the umpire waved it away but referee is calling it back for a free. A big delight in Tipperary Camogie that they'll have uh, one team there already. It'll Maybe add now a little bit of pressure to the senior team and try and do the same. Don't forget the 6th of August, busy day of Camogie action. The Premier Junior final getting underway at 10 to 1. Tip will be there. Who will be joining them? It'll be either Claire or Armand. That game follows here at 2 o'clock. As Jean Kelly gets ready to send another opportunity on this way. No, it's not Jean Kelly. In fact, it's uh, Saoirse McGrath taking that and she's knocked it out to the right and wide. So 2-11 to 7 as uh, another change comes and it's uh, Toda Horgan and Call the Shore and it looks like Rachel O'Dwyer is on. Don't forget if you're watching Camogie action underway in uh, FPD Seppel Stadium at 1 o'clock uh, there is Derry and Kilkenny. That's in the intermediate semi-final, followed at 3 o'clock by Mead and Westmead. Paul Jenkins is on commentary duty there. And don't forget then the TV coverage, RT2 and the RT player of the senior semi-finals, half three and half five. As Kira Brennan gets on this, and I'd say for all of Kira's persistence, she probably deserves that score. She's gone the wrong side of Brian Carney, but she kept going in fairness to her, trucking along there and gets her score after 56 minutes. 2.12 to 7. You'd have to say the scoreboard is harsh on Roscommon. Lovely bit of sunshine here now. It's had a, after adding to the warmth. All the extra layers that's on the standee. We feel like Egypt's now. Was <laughs> coming. Taking this... Uh, Free short, looking to try and get to Sean O'Fallon and maybe they know they need to get goals now at this point. Trying to pick it up there is their number 22, Tara Nocton. She came on at half time, dropping the ball inside. It's a dangerous ball! Got a touch there. And Eve O'Brien, glad to see that go beyond her post and it's out for a 45. I'd imagine here now, Fallon, she's not going to take a score, she's going to drop this in around. In there probably will be Neve Watson. I don't know what, waiting on the change actually. Uh, Roscommon introducing number 28, Ava Dowd. And she has put that ball to the right and wide, would you believe, after all that? Uh, Chloe White Lennon is the one that has uh, come off there. She's been replaced by uh, Ava Dowd, one at league player for another. 2.12 to uh, 7. That's coming, of course. Lost in the Division 3A semi final to Armagh this year. And now losing the semi final with a uh, considering maybe recent time. And there was a little bit of unrest and everything like that. They're probably happy enough that this year has seen a little bit of a rise in performance. 
ball is put over the bar from the free then by Sean O'Fallon. Make it eight points for Ross Common. Hard to believe it was ten points to six. And they were really in the hunt, as I said, when Aoife O'Brien took down that ball that was going to make it ten points to seven. And subsequently it went down the field and it was a goal. <coughs> ball was knocked long with two players going for the ball there, Rachel O'Dwyer. Not in a whole lot that Lohan could do. They just ran into one another. 2-12 to 8, it is a 10-point game, but as I said, it could have been a 3-point game and then you never know what would have happened, but Gene Kelly's fortuitous cross shot. I think there was no quite a bit about it. She was going for the point. It dropped just in under the crossbar and the post and Michaela Fallon could do little about it. Her second goal, though, a thing of beauty. And as we head towards picking a player of the match, you know, you'd have to credit uh, Tipful backline on occasion when they were living dangerously there in the first quarter of this game Cahal Sheedy and Ryan doing the needful along with uh, Walsh Claire's taking him had her moments Aoife Dwyer as well had a big first half I thought and got two fine points from uh, Roscommon point of view Sally Bulger there on you O'Mara you'd have to credit Watson and Connolly they had a big start to the second half to really curb the Tipperary influence Neve Watson as well but uh, our player of the match is going to go to Gene Kelly when you're Able to uh, turn games on a sixpence. And you rattle up 2-7 as well of the 2-12. I think you're deserving of the player of the match. So Gene Kelly will be our Glenn Dimplex player of the match. And we'll hopefully hear from her at the end of this. As Ross Common trying to build on this. Ross Common player decided to go backwards with it there. Ava Dowd. But eventually it's worked forward here. They might like to finish with a bit of a flourish and a goal here. Additional time I haven't seen, but sun now coming out here. We've had nearly the four seasons. All we're missing is the snow now. And you wouldn't bet against that happening. Play allowed to continue. Neve Fitzgerald trying to get on this, but she's held up there. Tipperary's number 22 trying to get in there. Tara Noct or uh, Rachel O'Dwyer. That's it. Frank Carney has seen enough. Didn't play other than maybe a minute and a bit of uh, the game here. Tipperary will be in Crow Park. Will it be one team? Will it be two? Well, around five o'clock you'll know if the second one has made it. But the Premier Junior crew will be there on August the 6th. 12.50 on that day will be the throw-in time. Who will be joining them? Will it be Armagh? Will it be Clare? Well, that will be decided here at 2 o'clock. That gets underway. And as, a, as you can imagine, a lot of delight here. But hard luck to Ross Common. Had, as we said, an opportunity. 10 points to 6. Ball was played in by uh, Rachel Fitzmaurice. Looked like he was going for a score. E4 Bryan took it down and eventually it was worked down the field. And in the next couple of uh, plays, it ended up in the back of the net at the far end. Across, I would imagine, at a cross come shot at a point from Jean Kelly dropped in under the uh, crossbar and uh, then a few minutes later she followed up with a second goal to really put the icing on the cake so 2 12 to 8 points Tipperary led of course by manager David Sullivan will be back in Crow Park from a Premier Junior point of view the last time they were there was 2002 they lost to Kilkenny in that uh, final the window in 2001 so with uh, everything, the trajectory of Tipperary Camogie at the moment all going in an upward curve. Well, they'll be hoping now to build on this here today, following up with a senior semi-final win later on possibly, and have two teams in Crow Park on the 6th of August. But for the moment anyway, hard luck to Ross Common. They give it of their all. No question about it, as I said, they were right in the game with 15 minutes to go. But when the goal went in on 49, they followed up on, on 52 that was the uh, the difference in the end. Jean Kelly, our player of the match, coming in with 2-7 of the 2-12. She will be one that we'll be keeping an eye on in Crow Park on the 6th of August. So for the moment, congratulations Tipperary. It's finished here on a full-time score in the Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Premier Junior Championship semi-final. Tipperary, 2-12. Ross Common, 8 points. It's tipped they'll be in Crow Park on the 6th of August. Stay with us. We'll hear from both camps and our player of the match.
watching the cameraman here, Gene. We're just going to have to come forward here. Just right here, I'm just watching him there. Yeah. <laughs> right, welcome back here to uh, Dunham or Ashburn and the lady that's a big, broad smile on your face, and you have your little <laughs> fan club here as well, uh, Gene. Tell us about that now, the emotion running through you, everything like that, back in Crow Park. Oh yeah, she was absolutely brilliant. Um, she was a dream come true to be playing in Crow Park, so delighted to get there and hopefully now we'll get over the line now, next or on Sunday two weeks. <laughs> Sunday two weeks, a big day to look forward to and hopefully as you probably from a tip point of view the seniors follow up, but for me... A tougher battle probably than you might have expected in some ways. Yeah, definitely. Um, they were like a really tough team. Like They literally left everything on the line. They were so tough in all the rocks and all the challenges. Um, we were just absolutely delighted now to get over the line and to come out the other end. <laughs> I was talking about it on commentary. Uh, Aoife pulls down the ball over the far end. It would have made it 10-7. The next few plays, you're taking a shot across. I would imagine you're going for the point, but it drops in and it all counts. Yeah, Jeez, yeah I was uh, hoping it went over the bar, but I'm not complaining now. <laughs> You get on then to another opportunity shortly after that and that probably is the icing on the cake then, the second goal. It relieved a lot of the pressure. I'd say some of the defence were happy that you found the back of the net. Yeah, sure. It was all from the girls, all the work play the girls did and like I just was on the breaking ball, that's it. Like. <laughs> Jean, just as well though, not having a game in a few weeks, do you think that maybe was led to some of the shakiness, definitely in the opening quarter? Oh yeah, like we had a championship game in four weeks, like so you could definitely see it in the first half, we were all a bit fumbling, a bit shakes. And I suppose nerves kind of came into it as well, but in the second half we really kind of drove it on and Joe brought the game home. Well, you did and you're in Crow Park in two weeks, look forward to it? Yeah, I can't wait and I was absolutely dream come true to be playing in Crow Park, so delighted. Right, well hopefully as you say, maybe as well the seniors follow up later on. Yeah, oh, Jesus, they're great, another great team, like they'll hopefully now follow on after us and another win and it'll be great to see two of us there in Crow Park in two weeks time. Right. Congratulations and well done Gene, you're a player of the match here, well done and uh, best of luck to Gene, we're going to call uh, the manager as well of course, uh, a man that we've spoken a little time before on our streams here of course uh, in his other jobs with Scarif and everything. Uh, David, how do, how do you rate that now? Um, it was a bit shaky on occasion but you know, you, you kind of went to the wire and you pulled out a lot of resolve, I'd say, to get it over the line, ultimately. Yeah, well, I suppose, look, all the semi-finals are never easy. And mm. I suppose Clare had a, had a big win over us coming in the group stage. And there was there was a thing there that, you know, they'd turn up today and they'd be cannon fodder. There was never going to be any team in an All-Ireland semi-final today. Easy bet, and we knew that. And in fairness to us coming, they brought ferocious work rate to the, the thing there. And I suppose Gene's first goal probably, you know, was the nail in the coffin. And we drove on after that. But, you know, it's certainly in terms of preparation for... Uh, for the final, you know, you couldn't do anything better than what Ross Common gave us for 40, 50 minutes of that game today. So it's great to come through the test, but, you know, it wasn't our greatest performance, but at the end of the day, semi-finals are there for winning and we won today and we're going to Crow Park and we can't be anything but delighted. Yeah, and I would imagine, though, as a manager, you're probably happy in a way that you had a bit of a test because the next two weeks of training now, trying to find people to line out and tug out, you know, there's every opportunity still for your panel there to uh, pick a jersey, isn't there? Yeah, we certainly have been open-ended in terms of a selection this year. We've never nailed down a, a first-choice 15, no, we've always trying to rotate it based on training and challenge games and how girls are going so you know the next two weeks I'm sure when we go back training Tuesday night there'll be a pep in the step for all 27 girls because in fairness everybody will want to be on that field for the for the throw in on, 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 on the 6th of August so the competition will be hectic in the next two weeks but that's what it's about when you're in a county like Tipperary you know when you have a panel of players as good as we are you expect competition and each girl I've no doubt will push each other to try and get the, the starting 15 spot for the next day. Just how important has it been though to have this Premier Junior team back in a, a setup, having two teams in Tipperary when you consider some of the quality that has been among clubs in the last few years? Yeah, well I suppose look, this is my first year here and I suppose we were we were disappointed as a county last year maybe we didn't achieve the goals that we wanted to we didn't make it out of the group stage and we lost early in the Munster Championship and I suppose that my job was to come in with my team and, and settle the thing down again and drive it on and uh, you know the reaction from the players has been brilliant but it's a brilliant competition look, it's it's brilliant for teams who maybe are not at that level of intermediate yet and have a chance to play a competitive, competitive camogie and get to Crow Park and play in an All-Ireland Final but certainly a county like us wants to play intermediate but unfortunately the next day we know we have a huge obstacle in our way and that's just the reality of it like if we want to continue the great strides that's in Tipperary Camogie which has been brilliant this year we do need our second team closer to the first team that's just the reality of it and it entices more players to play as well but for this group of 27 players you know they've put in some work you know they've, they've done over 100 sessions so far this season and you can see how much it means to them there now like they, they want this you know but we know ourselves the next day Armagh or Clare are probably going to be heavy favourites based on what they did last year in this competition but we're there with a 50-50% chance of winning and that's all we could ask for at the start of the year is to be an All-Ireland final day with a chance of winning an All-Ireland and we're there and you know we'll give it everything in two weeks time.
sure you will. Congratulations, thank the best of luck, David. Thank you. David Sullivan there giving us his thoughts then on the action here from uh, Dunhamore Ashburn with regards to Tipperary. They are back in Crow Park. The first team to be in Crow Park on All Ireland Final Day are Tipperary. They'll be in the Premier Junior Final, and that game is at, of course, 12.50 on the 6th of August. Who will they be playing? We'll find out over the next uh, two hours or thereabouts. Armagh and Claire throw in here at 2 o'clock. Do stick with us.
And you're very welcome back here to Dunamore Ashburn for the second semi final in the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Premier Junior Camogie Championship. Already victorious are Tipperary. They'll be in Crow Park on the 6th of August. Who will be uh, joining them? Will it be Armagh? Will it be Clare? Well, over the next hour and a half, I'm sure uh, we will find out. Man in the middle for this encounter is uh, Bernard Heaney. He didn't have to travel too far. He's here from the county of Mead. He'll be helped up by Ender Lachnan, Shane Foley and Ronan Carroll is the fourth official. Armagh, of course, coming into this game on the back of uh, big wins all through their group, beating Mayo, Limerick and uh, Offaly. So they're definitely the team to stop. And, uh, you know, the experience that starts with uh, Kiri Devlin in a goal, of course. The goalkeeper has uh, experienced many a big day. Nicola Woods also a standout player. The captain, Michelle McGuigan, will lead from the edge of the D, uh, along with the uh, scoring exploits of Emer Smith. Of course, uh, former Cork legend uh, Jennifer Curry, as she now is the captain of this team. And Rachel Murray will also be one that will be uh, chipping in. So Armagh will line out with uh, Kiri Devlin in goal. It's uh, Shidna Woods, Tiernan Maguire and Nicola Woods then will be the full-back line. Katie Kumiski, Michelle McGuigan the captain and Ashing Harvey is in the left half back position. Centre field Gemma McGann and Leanne Donnelly then the half forward line made up of Vimer Smith, Karina Doyle and Ellie McKee and the full forward line made up of Sinead Quinn, Jennifer Curry and Rachel Murray. That the Armagh team that will line out as selected in the programme. Claire make one change they bring in number 17 Rebecca Crow. She was supposed to be ruled out with a shoulder injury, but she seems to have proved her fitness and the Rouen player will take in in place of Rachel Kelly. But they will also, of course, have uh, some big performances from the likes of Sarah Lochnan, Olivia Doyle and Michelle McMahon as well. Laura McMahon, of course, uh, Michelle's sister will lead from the centre-back position. But Claire then lining out as follows uh, with uh, Lauren Solon, the goalkeeper in goal, well known for long puckouts and also apparently a good player of golf as well. She's the white player. She'll be in the middle of uh, the uh, goals for Claire here uh, this afternoon. Coming in then, wearing the number 17 is uh, Rebecca Crow. Fine cornerback, she is expected then uh, to uh, be in here fully fit and raring to go here again. Quiva Lally from Newmarket on Fergus. Apparently works in the Woodstock Hotel, her parents' business in uh, Ennis. Never seems to have a trouble getting off uh, for training. So she will be a uh, full-back here today, leading the needful. And Sinead Hoggle, you might recognise the name Sinead. She, of course, is a sister of Aaron, the uh, referee, who, of course, has... Uh, played and uh, lined up with uh, some big games in Camogie over the last couple of years and you might have seen Sinead standing beside the uprights well this time she's out uh, on the field of play. The half-back line then will be made up of uh, Ellen Casey and Laura McMahon, both of them uh, from Newmarket on Fergus. Of course, uh, Laura's mum, Veronica, won an All-Ireland medal for Clare and her dad, Shawnee, is a former inter-county hurling uh, referee. Sinead O'Keefe Kilmele then is a dual player, able to run all day and we'll expect to see a lot of that from the left half-back position. Neve Mulqueen and Grace Carmody, they will uh, be the ones in the middle of the field. Grace, of course, has her dad uh, as the manager here and her older sister, Quiva, is on the senior uh, panel and we expect Grace to have a big encounter on the scoreboard as well. Leisha O'Donnell, she will be wearing the number 10 shirt. She was the player of the match in the Division 3B League final. Michelle McMahon, new to the panel this year, it was at number 11. And then Jennifer Daly from the famous uh, Daly family in Scarf Of course, she has triplet sisters, and two of them, Susan and Linda, are on the senior Camogie panel, but Jennifer is here herself today. Quiva Cahill will wear the number 13 shirt. She also played with the Clare Ladies minor panel. And Sarah Lochnan and Olivia Phelan of Six Mile Bridge are in the other positions in the full forward line. We pause for our on Naveen. So Clare and Armagh about to get underway. Last time I saw these two teams, it was in Conniff Park in Clane two years ago when Armagh came out on top. And went on, of course, to the All-Ireland final where, unfortunately, 
they lost out and have done the last two years. So they have two wins of the K Mills Cup in 93 and 2020, of course, that uh, great game between themselves and Cavan in the COVID final. But they've uh, lost a number of times, and especially in more recent times, 2016, 21 and 22. So looking to get back there. Of course, uh, no Kira Donnelly this year. Kira, I don't know if she's here, but if she's uh, watching, we should have best look. She's uh, expecting baby at the minute. Someone of her capability has meant maybe one or two others have had to step up here. And you're looking at Emer Smith and Sinead Quinn probably being a few of them. For Clare, of course, beat Loud, Tyrone, Roscommon and Cavan on the way to get into this uh, semi-final. Have lost the uh, finals in 03, 05 and 07. Won in 08 when they beat Offaly. Lost the semi-final to Antrim, of course, last year after two periods of extra time in a cracking game in Tullamore. And lost to, to Armagh in 21. But are the Division 3B winners in the league this year, whereas Armagh lost the Division 3A final to Carlo. So... This game could be tight and close. We'll see how it all plays out over the next while. Referee, as we said, is uh, Bernard Heaney. Just keeping the count on the players. He throws the ball in. Game is on. We're just a minute past one. And straight away, it's Armagh on the attack as they will attack the goals to our left-hand side. Looking to get on this ball is Emer Smith. Smith having the early shot, but it looks like it's going to be pulled to the left and wide. So a bit of pressure there from the clear defence from that ultimate shot. And... Emer, who's uh, found the back of the net from the Bally McNabb club, of course, same club as the manager, Sean Hughes. Led Bally McNabb to three senior Camogie titles from 19 to 21. Planes going in overhead into Dublin Airport has been quite busy in the skies above us over the last while. Thankfully, the skies have uh, opened up a little bit as regards rain and good conditions here at the minute, but throughout the Tipperary and Roscommon game, it was uh, disappointing, to say the least. Just the conditions to be conducive for good camogie. But it's uh, clear coming out. That's a lovely take there by Leisha O'Donnell. Went to the clouds there to be able to get it. And uh, referee says that she was being fouled. Sarah Lachnan has a shot at the post anyway. Maybe just to get the uh, shoulders pumping. Let you know the feel of it the next time. Good to see members of the Clare Senior Panel here in front of us as well. Keeping an eye on the compatriots from the Junior Panel. Don't forget intermediate action on now as well with uh, Derry were leading Kilkenny at half time by six points to five. Mead and Westmead get underway at three o'clock those games in Simple Stadium and then the senior semi-finals from UPMC Nolan Park are available on RT2 and the RT player from 3.30 so early chance for Clare here then to settle the nerves and the shot is put in and to the right and wide and that is a missed opportunity from Sarah Lachnan especially as she had actually pointed the the free the, the ball in play so two wides apiece two minutes gone no score in this All-Ireland semi-final ball taken there by Katie Comiskey on into the corner it goes, looking for a bit of a run there. Inside from Jennifer Curry to Rachel Murray. Rachel has 16 points in this year's championship. Playing the ball across field now, looking for Sinead Quinn, who's 13 white flags. Plays that ball in, but a little bit of a block on it there from a Claire Hurl. And it's going to be a 45. So a little bit of a tentative start by both teams. First game was entertaining enough. I know the score doesn't do maybe Roscommon justice. They were right in that game with 10 minutes to go. For two, it is enough goal for Tipperary. Made it 110 to 8, and then they just built on that to finish up 10 points winners in the end. <coughs> so the free for Rachel Murray then. Or the 45, I should say. And she puts that up and over the bar, says the umpire. So the first point goes to Arma in this second semi-final. Who will be playing tip in Crow Park on the 6th of August? Good poke out. And a fi find by Lauren Solon straight to Leisha O'Donnell. O'Donnell, ball eventually gets across here to midfielder Neve Mulqueen. 
trying to get this ball moving but it's a uh, ball breaks on the top of the D and it's Grace Carmody there's a player inside for Clare there's actually a 3 and 2 situation but Armagh have done the needful there loaded it up on the half back line to be able to win that ball back but Clare have done it down this end a bit of a loose pass but it still might work out for Clare though to drive forward with Ellen Casey Newmarket and Fergus player dropping it down into the corner Clare looking to recycle the ball around and keep possession but uh that ball seems to be a bit slippy as I can imagine the ground is with the rain and mist that was falling in the first game trying to get on it there Michelle McMahon lost from her hand though and down on the ground and uh, digging it out there was Tiernan Maguire and eventually it comes over to this side of the field right in front of myself and Danny Turley who's on camera duty looked like a bit of a late one there on uh, Clare number 5 Ellen Casey the ball is inside now Clare still coming forward and that's going to be a free out and of course the rule in uh, the Camogie game it's up to the player coming forward to avoid the uh, defender standing underground and that's a free out being given here by Bernard Heaney batted down again here by Ellen Casey she's been in the game a lot here in the last couple of minutes Blocked down there, Grace Carmody, but it works out for Clare. Back it goes to Ellen Casey. Plays a diagonal ball up into the corner forward position where Bernard Heaney, the referee, says that there was a foul committed there on the Clare number 13, Quiva Cahill. And the Kilmaley player jogs into the uh, edge of the square where I imagine the free is going to be taken here by Sarah Lucknan. Got two goals against Cavan in their 314 to 7 points win. Hard to know the barometer at these two sides. Um, there seem to be lots of scores and heavy scores on their side and not conceding a whole lot. So it could be a bit of a chess match, this one, as Lachnan knocks that ball over the bar. Clare on the attack now again, turning over that uh, puck out from Armagh. Leisha O'Donnell got it in, but it's Maguire that bats it out to the middle. She had it in her hand, Katie Comiskey left it behind, but she does get it going at the second time of asking, and it's going to be helped up by Gemma McCann. She's looking for a bit of movement from Rachel Murray, got the uh, opening score of the game from a 45. She's been held up there though by uh, Rebecca Crow, but she gets it the second time, coming in along the line, spots the player over here is Emer Smith, Smith knows how to get goals, the referee and the linesman though, or the umpire, have gesticulated that the ball was wide before Murray played it across. Emer Smith coming into this game 3-6, but they've scored huge tallies against uh, Mayo, Limerick and Offaly. Armagh have only conceded 1-13 in their three matches. Clare have been as miserly, haven't conceded a goal. And have only conceded 17 points. So two defences here. This could be interesting how it plays out. Ashin Harvey, the key player, comes across on that ball, drops it down towards uh, Sinead Quinn. Good block down though there by the Clare number seven. Sinead O'Keefe, dual player of course, knocking it down the wing. And going to be taken on here by Jennifer Daly. Jennifer of Scarif have gone low, knocking this ball in and up and over the bar. Claire Crowe, appreciative of that effort there by uh, Jennifer Daly. We're seeing Jennifer a few years ago, of course, in the coverage of the club championship with Scarif have gone low. At that stage, was coming on in matches maybe with Scarif and their triplet sisters were the ones that were lining up with uh, She's obviously matured into a fine player in her own right as Armagh come down the other end of the field and with Ellie McKee straight away into her hand. She was in a bit of space from Rachel Murray. She puts that ball over the bar and that's a good response from Armagh. I suppose this game now could go one or two ways. It could be a right shootout or it could be a bit of a chess match to to see but eight minutes gone, two points apiece. Puck out to come then from Lauren Solon. Lauren has a good puck out and uh, very well found and very well caught as well. That's clear on the attack straightening herself up now and looking to drive on is uh, Michelle McMahon playing that ball in it wasn't maybe the right ball I think and uh, Maguire has cleared it there Vinci centre back is and captain Michelle McGuigan which her clearance block down is going to be picked up here by Neve Mulqueen 
Plays it into the middle to her midfield partner, Grace Carmody. Carmody taking it on the run. Bit of a slap on the hurl there. She took that shot, but it's gone up and over the bar. She had enough behind her. And Grace Carmody gets a fine point there. Nine minutes gone, and it's now coming tit for tat. 45 by Murray on three minutes, and a free from Lucknan on six. Then it was uh, Jennifer Daly, Ellie McKee, and now Grace Carmody. All coming those three points in the last 60 seconds. Over on the far side now. Armagh coming strong run again. Curry looking to give it off with a shot. She's found the back of the net. Jennifer Curry. Well she's lost none of her brilliance. The years might be moving on but uh, still has it. Numerous All-Irelands with Cork of course and All-Stars. And she's found the back of the clear net. Clear having conceded a goal. But they have now in this year's championship. Just now from Je the brilliance of Jennifer Curry. There was no question she was going to tap that ball over the bar. Drive and run and went for the top of Solon's net. Claire responding kind of dropping that in and over the bar. And that's a fine effort from Sarah Lockman. What did they tell you? This could be a shootout happening here. Coming into this game, the two defences were the ones on top. But at the minute... The forwards are showing the way. 1-2 to 4. The goal coming from a spectacular effort from Jennifer Curry. Karina Doyle to take this sideline cut. Knocking a nice ball into the middle but it's taken there by Neve Mulqueen who's again the player that's been a good bit in this game in the early stages. Clearance by Sheet in the woods, but blocked down there by the Clare defence. But it's going to be driven on here now by uh, Sinead Quinn. Quinn offloading the pass, tried to find it inside to Karina Doyle, but it's cut off by the Clare defence. Short ball, lovely take there by Grace Carmody. Fouled, says the referee. Advantage being played. Carmody down along the wing. Advantage not accruing, and it's going to be a free in. So Clare bouncing back after conceding that goal, got a point straight away, and hunting now maybe to get a leveller here. And it's uh, Ellen Casey. I'm going to take this free here in the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Premier Junior Championship semi final. Tipperary already in Crow Park on the 6th of August. As Casey dropping this ball in on the top of the D. Ball breaks. Trying to get there is uh, McGuigan. Ball gets away from her. Lochnan in there trying to make herself a bit of a nuisance. Coming across as well to try and uh, dig it in there. Olivia Phelan. But it's uh, the Armagh defence that have it, but the ball eventually blocked down up in that top corner. Our angle here now just a little bit hard to see that top corner, but the ball is played in by the Armagh defence. Eventually clear down along the line here, but it uh, looks like it's too tight to the sideline. And it's going to be sideline ball for Clare. So a sideline cut to be taken by Laura McMahon. I have to say, the two girls lining out, or even the half-back line for Clare. Very tall girls. It's going to be hard to get around them. Seem to have a strong central spine as well. But the two McMahons at 6 and 11. This ball goes across. Oh, Keith went up there, made a bit of a fly ad and missed... Going to be picked up though by cornerback there, Sinead Hogg. Sister, of course, of uh, Aaron. Ball played inside, loose though, a little bit too tentative. And Emer Smith drives onto it. Here's a shout here from Ellie McKee. Going to have a shot off. That's a hell of an effort. It goes over the bar. And that is a fine effort from Ellie McKee. That's her second point. Just called on that ball there. And uh, was found with the pass by Emer Smith and drove it from distance over the bar. Fine score. Solon out to the middle. Lost there a little bit by Casey, but she's able to recover. Being hassled there by Smith, but she gets the ball off to Sinead O'Keefe. And O'Keefe delivers a diagonal ball across here now that might suit Claire to get driving. Lee Shaw O'Donnell scoops it up to herself and probably played it a little bit too high. The referee says that she was being held up there illegally by Ashlyn Harvey. And it's going to be a free that uh, Sarah Lachnan will be behind here. Angle is quite tight on the 45 metre line. 
but she's probably sufficiently enough in from the sideline to be able to aim it at the right hand upright very little breeze here if any so nothing really the condition should affect it other than the strike that she gets on it so Lachnan comes up to this ball addresses it and then sends it on its way probably pulled it across the goal a little bit it's dropping but it's gone out to the left and wide probably classified as a wide against Sarah 14 minutes gone she's at two points and two wides 1-3-4 that Jennifer Curry goal the difference ultimately between these sides a fine goal that it was indeed bit of a fly shot missed there by Leanne Donnelly Leanne a veteran of many a campaign of course here for Armagh and uh, looked like she dragged that ball out Armagh crowd were looking for a free that looked like a foul there committed on the Armagh half back Ashton Harvey but she makes it to the ball ahead of Leisha O'Donnell and eventually referee is given a free to Armagh Ball breaks there. And the Roscommon girls coming out to sit and watch the second semi final. Disappointed, obviously, in losing out to Tipperary. Give Tipperary a fine battle and a test. It's only really in the ten, last 10 minutes of that game was decided. But who will be joining Tipperary then in Crow Park at 12.50 in the Premier Junior final? That's then the throw in is on the 6th of August. Quarter of an hour gone, one three to four. Helen Casey from Newmarket and Fergus alongside her club mate there in the half back line, dropping this ball in. Ball breaks away from Loch Nan and on. There's enough uh, orange and white jerseys there to be able to come out with it. It's good play by the Armagh defence. Finchie McGuire clears it, looking for Donnelly, breaks off of uh, Casey, but Donnelly's able to pick up the break and move it across here now, looking for Jennifer Curry, last time she got the ball in this position she found the back of the net, she's still going Jennifer, looking to play the ball inside now, looking for a turning shot here from Sinead Quinn, dropping it in and dropping it over the bar, and Sinead Quinn has her first score of the afternoon, Jennifer Curry setting it up. Well known of course as Jennifer O'Leary, as a multiple all-Ireland an All-Star winner with Cork got a cracking goal and that is now the official difference 1-4 to 4 16 and a half gone it's the Glen Dimplex Premier Junior Camogie Championship semi-final and Leisha O'Donnell is definitely a standout player here for Clare at the moment lovely bit of skill playing the ball inside Clare of an overlap here now need to drive on the opportunity maybe to accrue here with McMahon Michelle McMahon having a shot driving it in and over the bar and that was all down to the control of Leisha O'Donnell involving one or two others but the puck out as well from Solon and Clare make a count at the other end of the field with a fine score 17 minutes gone they're back to within two, one, four to five. Puck out to come from Kiri Devlin. Kiri, again, a better know of many a campaign for Armagh at this stage, but it's Leisha O'Donnell that's on to the break. Throws a bit of a loose pass back here now towards Casey. Under a little bit of pressure here now. Got to take it away from Smith. Vinci plays a oh, nice little ball back to O'Donnell. O'Donnell, lovely dinky ball up towards McMahon here. McMahon now being chased all the way here by McGuigan. Needs to play the ball inside. Looking for a diagonal ball. Looked like the touch there was got uh, by Katie Comiskey, but she's put her defenders under a bit of pressure. Maguire's got to be strong. She scoops it out here to Leanne Donnelly, and Donnelly looks over her left shoulder and drives it down the field underneath it there oh what a take there by Sinead Quinn looking to drive on two clear players around her loses the ball the referee says I'm going to give you the free in advantage was accruing and it should be Rachel Murray to tap this ball over the bar and put it back out to a th uh, three point game every time there's a score one in there's a score back at the other bouncing around here at the minute Rachel Murray no doubt will put this ball up and over the bar and she has Adding to her 45 after three minutes, Rachel Murray with her second place ball. And the Grandmore player makes it a three point game again. Puck out over there from Lauren Solon, white gate player who's a good golfer as well, apparently. Opportunity now to drive in on the far side with Jennifer Daly, and she's still going. Shortens the grip. This will be a fine score. That is a cracking effort. 
from Clare, all from the puck out again, their last two scores. Misha Donnell went up though, but she missed that. Casey trying to get there, but it's going to be driven forward now by Ellie McKee, but it's turned over there by uh, Ellen Casey. Casey looking to drive it into the corner, but the Armagh cornerback, Shidna Woods, is there to be able to send that down the field. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Shidna was connected and related to former Uteron of the Camogie Association, Kathleen Woods. Someone might correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I think I saw that somewhere. Decent cut there from that sideline by Laura McMahon. Gets it here towards Michelle. Looking to step inside. Clear of a bit of an overlap here now. Got to make a count if they want to drive forward. Jennifer Daly puts that ball over the bar and they've got scores on the bounce here now quickly. And now it's a one point game. We said Jennifer Daly, Quiva Cahal, apologies. Ball is not long now, looking to get on control of it here. Sinead Quinn got the last score for our match. She's got the next one as well. And at the minute, they just can't deal with that Armagh full forward line. Anytime it gets down there anyway, they're doing the needful and it's got out to a two-point game again. 1-6-7. Driving forward here now from uh, centre-back Laura McMahon. Looking for a bit of a run there from Michelle but the uh, referee says that it was a foul on Laura McMahon. Still going back to that Jennifer Daly point. A fine effort individually taking the puck out and driving forward and then being able to lift it over the bar. Two fine scores she's got. That brought Claire back to one point but then down at the far end someone who's doing the needful as well. Sinead Quinn, two points in the last few minutes and she brings it out to a two-point game again but Free to clear. <laughs> or free to say to play it from where the ball ended up. As there's a late tackle on Laura McMahon. And it's a free for Lochnan to drive it towards that upright. And this time she's got the measure of it. It was a very similar position. She missed one a few minutes back. Well, it, it dropped short, but this time she got the measure of it. And after 21 and a half minutes of this. Glen Diplex All Ireland Premier Junior Camogie Championship semi final. It's Armagh who lead by a point. That Jennifer Curry goal, the difference. Other than that, clear of, I'd say we're probably sneaking the possession stakes, but Armagh driving forward now. Ashton Harvey, the Keedy player, looking to knock it into their full forward line. But it's uh, Rebecca Crow that went up the train wind at the referee says, pushing the back, free in, and it's a handy one for Rachel Murray. Just looking at it again. Maybe get Danny the next thing the players up this in to have a look at how far out the field the half back lane or half forward lane for Armagh are playing in order to create space in front of that full forward line. And I think when you have Sinead Quinn, Jennifer Curry and Rachel Murray in the form that they're in, you're going to be utilising that space. Danny Turley is the man on camera duty here today in Dunhamore Ashburn. Hopefully you're enjoying the action. Push out with a rook there. The referee would be interested to see what he's going to do. Yeah, and Donnelly came in to get involved and uh, I think there was a bit of a loose hand came through the rook there and just pushed her in the face over. I don't know whether the referee saw that as that and uh, whether he's going to throw the ball in just. don't think he saw a foul committed. From our angle it definitely looked like a foul. But we're not refereeing I suppose. So 1-7 for Armagh, 8 points for Clare. Who will be joining Tipperary in the Premier Junior Final on the 6th of August to play it out for the K Mills Cup? Well, Armagh, if they qualify, it'll be their fourth All-Ireland Final in a row. And they've only won one of them. Ball breaks. It looks a bit... Of a wild pull across uh, Ellie McKee there, but the referee allowed the play to continue and advantage being played here. And all of a sudden now there's just a little bit of bite coming in. And 
speak of the devil that I'm just talking about Kira Donnelly was wondering was she here she's right down in front of us here running the line it's uh, the water as this ball breaks inside the clear defence are in there the forwards it's gone out would you believe for a 45 there was a chance I should have said the Armagh defence had been split wide open and it was Olivia Phelan got a goal against Cavan the last day you would have banked on her there I would have thought and somehow that ball was blocked out by Kiri Devlin for a 45 So Lachnan to make it a one-point game again from this 45. Driving it towards the uprights and the umpire has gone for the flag. It's over the bar. 2.45s in this game and both of them have been pointed. The shootout between Lachnan and Murray is going Lachnan's way. She is four points and uh, Kiri Devlin getting ready to take this 25 gone 1 7 to 9 that Jennifer Curry goal the one thing that's keeping Armagh in front here ball breaks and it's uh, picked up here by a very impressive player so far Neve Mulqueen it's uh, Olivia Phelan that nearly had that goal chance but uh, played the ball forward towards Lachnan but Maguire wins that ball being helped out there by Ellie McKee Ellie back helping out her defence and she's already got two points on the board as well player that's really in this game a lot is Ellen Casey sprays a lovely ball across the field into a bit of space here now for Clare Leisha O'Donnell playing it back in the diagonal on the edge of the square oh looking to pirouette lovely around that tackle there Quiva Cahill looking to get inside referee said she was pulled back and a chance here now for Clare to get level and they haven't been in this situation since that Jennifer Curry goal so they really have fought hard to get back on parity and you would feel Armagh, if they had to take a foul, they had to do that because Cahill was going to get inside. And uh, McNan puts that ball over the bar. <coughs> so it's a draw game. 10 points to 1-7. Armagh maybe just in the last 5-6 minutes, not as fluid as they were in uh, the previous 10 before that definitely declare number 5 and 6 having big games now Ellen Casey and Laura McMahon they're disrupting maybe a little bit of play forward and it's a clear ball over on that far side in front of the clear dugout Amar cuts today uh, minus the two Crilly sisters I believe they're in Australia at their brother's wedding this week I don't know if they're watching but hello to you if you are hear the hours and all that so 1-7 for Armagh 10 for Clare as the Katie Kumiski plays this ball downfield. Lovely touch on by Murray there, looking to get away from Rebecca Crow. And Rebecca just left into her long enough for Murray to buy the free. And a chance for her to put Armagh back in front here. Mary then with this strike, it's up and over the back pot. Yeah, it's over the bar. I think I heard a shout from an Armagh mentor to his defence to stop fouling so that uh, Sarah Lachnan wouldn't be knocking balls over the bar. I think the same could be said down this end. It's a little bit of a shootout now between Lachnan and Murray at the minute. 1 8 to 10, and anyway, ball into the middle. Ball breaks. Donnelly, don't think she knew a whole lot about that. As she flicked, as the ball flicked back to her. Comiskey down into the corner looking to get Curry maybe on this ball thought she got a little bit of a nudge in the back there from Sinead Hogg but the ball might break still though favourably it's with Emer Smith going to have a shot off but it's going to tail out to the right and wide a 
it's way there for Armaz Emer Smith. That's her second weight. Never had too many. And I think it's about three to two in the weight front. One eight to ten then. Book out to come from goalkeeper Lauren Solon from the Whitegate Club. Winning that ball very well over there. Tenacious enough from the Armagh captain McGuigan. One minute of additional time to be played. So that's about a minute and a half remaining of this first half. Thankfully being played in decent conditions here. No sun to blind you. No rain to be wetting you. But it is turning into a bit of a chess match of sorts. As this free to be taken by Don Lee knocking it down towards Jennifer Curry then Murray is in there as well also in there McKee ball has been taken away by the clear defence though and they have played very very well here going to come forward bit of a physical encounter there but uh, Rachel Kelly who's in the game I don't know I don't know if Rachel has come in at some point and we missed it but she was down to start. Maybe it's someone else in the defence. We might have been given the wrong number that was replaced. Maybe there's a change that's just happened. But uh, Rachel Kelly is in there now at the minute anyway. And she got that ball off and it's a free for Claire's number five who's had a big game. Ellen Casey driving it in. Dangerous ball falls on the edge of the square. And the Armagh defence were a little bit at sixes and sevens and eventually went out off an Armagh hurl. And it's going to be another 45 that should fancy Loch Nan with. And I just see the clear player going over on the off on the far side, so just missed that there. So Rachel Kelly is in. And it might be Rebecca Crow. So it's like for like. And I wonder did Rebecca aggravate that injury and it's up and over the bar there from Lachnan. And I'd say the referee's going to blow half-time whistle. There you go. Level at the break then as they were at the start. And it might have toed and froed and went one way. Especially for a long time there. Armagh with that goal from Jennifer Curry that came and expertly taken goal after 10 minutes. That gave them a little bit of breeding room, but uh, Claire drove on and with points from Sarah Lochnan, Jennifer Daly with a fine effort and Quiva Cal, they've been able to pull themselves back into this game where they're right on parity now again. Rachel Murray doing the needful, but Armagh just seemed to have dropped off the pace a little bit, if you were to say that, probably allowing Claire the opportunity to get level ultimately in this game. But pick a winner going to be hard to go are we looking at extra time and are we looking at another periods of extra time like we saw last year with Clare I wouldn't bet against it the way things are going here it's Clare 11 points Armagh 1-8 it's half time here in the Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Premier Junior Mogi Championship semi-final for the right to play tip in the final on the 6th of August
And you're welcome back here to Dunamore Ashburn in County Mead for the second half of our second semi-final in the Glen Dimplex Premier Junior All-Ireland semi-final. <laughs> and it is as it was at the start of the game. It's a draw game between these two, Claire and Armagh, two sides that would have known each other a little bit over the last few years. Claire were beaten by Armagh in the semi-final two years ago in Clane. But uh, two teams probably changed a lot. Uh, definitely Clare have changed a lot since that day. And in the middle is Bernard Heaney. And he's been helped up by Enda Lachnan, Shane Foley and Ronan Carroll. So half an hour away to decide who will be in Crow Park on the 6th of August for the K Mills Cup against Tipperary. Will it be Armagh or will it be Clare? We should know about 20 past three. Ball is in and it's Armagh that get the flick on it straight away with uh, Leanne Donnelly driving through, being chased all the way there by the midfield partnership of Clare and Mulqueen and Carmody, but she's still going, but the break falls and it's uh, going to be taken out here by Laura McMahon. Grace Carmody got a point in that first half, but it's been turned over again. And Claire driving, uh, Karina Doyle driving it on for Armagh with the opening shot. And just like it was in the first half, the opening shot is a wide. Just if you're only joining us, as I said, second semi final tip into the final beating Ross Common. The scoreline a little bit harsh on uh, Ross Common right in that game with 10 minutes to go, had a chance at 10 points to six to make it 10-7 and the tip goalkeeper blocked down the chance and it went down the field and they got a goal and they eventually won 2 12 to 8 McClare knocking this ball now into full forward now an opportunity maybe to break away and here it goes Quiva Cal Cal with the shot oh decided did she to take her point or maybe she was having a shot at that up at that uh, crossbar and if it dipped under fine but good score from Quiva Cal her second point of the game and she's causing a few problems there for Armagh cornerback. And Clare in front for the first time in a while. To turned over that puck out, driving it in there a little bit too much. Power on it there from uh, Michelle McMahon. Probably could have found Lucknan inside. Short puck up then by... Armagh's custodian, Kira Devlin, but it's been turned over again, and Clare coming on the attack, and they have an overlap here, they want to make a count, but they elect to go again for a ball inside, Devlin's underneath it, and Clare, those chances could come back to haunt them, there was a 4-3 and three situation there, but they elected to go for the shot, and Armagh could make them pay here, Emer Smith, looking to play that ball forward, but referee says that she was fouled by Jennifer Daly, and it's a, a free in, for Armagh, that'll be Rachel Murray, will it be? Yeah. See Kira Donnelly there on water duty. Obviously a player of her calibre. Make a huge difference, Armagh, here today. As Murray plays that ball in, that's a decent effort. Right behind it all the way up and over the bar. And back level pegging again here. I called extra time early on. It's going to take something to praise these two apart, I think. Claire now with a chance here again. There's a four on three overlap here. Looking to make this pay. Driving forward with it. Chance in sight to offload the ball, but catching it and watching it all the way. Nicola Woods. And again, Claire coughing up a chance inside. And I don't know how many more of those will uh, accrue for them. Strong striving run here now by Karina Doyle. Had a wide already, but this time she puts it over the bar and Armagh back in front. And she makes Claire pay for not taking the chance at the other end. Claire finding a few holes, but just not punching through it at the minute. Out towards McMahon, but the ball is broken down and it's uh, suiting Armagh here now at the minute. Good turnover play there by Jennifer Daly. Gets it into her hand at the second time of asking. Looks like she was being fouled there by uh, Gemma McCann. Ball into the middle. A roll lift there by uh, Quiva. Referee Alex just as she got the ball in her hand. He decided it was a foul. 
and uh, Quiva Cal looked like she was just about to get away. A decision made to free in and a chance for Sarah Lucknan to get her seven point of the game. She said 245, three frees and a point from play. So with 35 minutes gone, it's a draw game again. So a draw game, 13 points to 110, the goal from Jennifer Curry. Jennifer been relatively quiet since. Ball breaks in the middle off of uh, Cahill Turl there and it's Leanne Donnelly knocking the ball down into the car. Rachel Murray full of running there, but inside uh, further on, Emer Smith has three goals in the championship already. Is this her fourth? <laughs> and Claire with the chances down at this end, probably too coughed up down the far end. And you can't give Emer Smith that chance, especially when she's on a bit of a goal fest and she's got her fourth goal of this year's championship. Back of the net, three point game, and Claire have to go up that hill again. So, Rachel Mary, Karina Doyle, and now Emer Smith on the scoreboard at the start of this second half. Claire have only got that free from Sarah Lochnan and probably should have had a few more chances put over the bar or in the back of the onion sack. But with five and a half gone, 2 10 to 13, and a chance here now for Armagh to stretch a lead again further. Sun coming out here now in Dunhamore Ashburn. Ball played in there with Katie Komiski. She's pulled it to the left and wide though. Oh, Claire, having not conceded a goal in this year's championship, we've now conceded two. For all the position that they've had, are now finding themselves, as I said, with a bit of a mountain to climb again. Ball returned by Armagh, dropping it in. Had to be batted away by Clare goalkeeper there. Claire looking to come charging again now. It goes in here towards uh, Quiva Cahill. It's becoming a bit of a danger player now. Again looking to get away. Being tackled all the way there by Sheedna Woods. The referee said she was being pulled back. And a chance now to eat into that three point lead. But you would feel Claire are going to have to take one of those opportunities if it opens up again. But if you're our man management, you're a little bit concerned about Quiva Cahill and the impact she's having on the corner back there as that ball is knocked over the bar by Sarah Lochnan. A right semi-final here between these two as we expected it to be. But our man with the goals, leading... Right, 2.10 to 14. Don't forget, second semi-final of the Intermediate Championship gets underway at 3 o'clock. That game down in FPD Simple Stadium. Mead playing Westmead. Coming up at half three, of course, you have uh, Tipperary and Waterford in the senior semi-final, and that's followed at half five by Cork and Galway. As clear, make a change. Senior semi finals, don't forget, are on the 
RT2 and RT player as uh, Cahal getting on this ball. Spins left and right, has her own shot off. Up and over the bar. Kiri Devlin was trying to influence him. But Quiva Cahal has all of a sudden grown into this game here. Seems to be coming a focal point inside in that forward line. There you can he seems seem to be in play there at the minute. Just uh, Derry look like they're leading and on the way to Crow Park. It's two ten to fifteen. And Claire coming at it again now. Quiva Cahal is the one that's uh, stirred things for them in the last couple of minutes. But numbers back there now for Armagh. Ball played in by Emer Smith. Got that goal that opened up a three point lead, but Claire turning it around. Claire's Laura McMahon has been replaced by uh, Kleena Quealy from Aina Kilnamona. Ball in the direction of uh, Loch Nan. Gets a touch on it, but she's been held up off that ball there by Tierna Maguire. Ball on the ground. Quiva Cahal trying to get in there and win it, and she does. Looking to get away here now, Quiva. Still going, but held up. Illegally, some of the crowd thought, but the referee happy to let Leanne Donnelly get on the ball here and play the ball forward in the direction of McKee. McKee giving it off here now. Chance for an easy Armagh score. That ball is on its way up and over the bar. Back out to a two-point lead. <coughs> Latest Armagh score from Sinead Quinn, her third point of the game. Hold up there as we see uh, another change happening for Clare. Looks like Olivia Phelan has been called ashore. So Casey Toomey from Newmarket and Ferguson in for Olivia Phelan. As this ball played long here. Opportunity maybe for our man out to get it back to three points. Ball is into the middle again. Shot coming from Leanne Donnelly. And the ball has gone out to the left and wide. Chance kind of big in there. And keep on top of everything that's going on here. And just confirmation. At the intermediate semi final, Derry will be in the Crow Park on All Ireland final day. They've defeated Kilkenny by 21 points to 14. That makes up a little bit for last year, of course, and Derry lost out in Nolan Park in the All Ireland semi final. But Derry will be there along with Tipperary. Mead and Westmead will be going off in the next few minutes to uh, decide to play them. But who will be joining Tipperary in the Premier Junior final? Jennifer Curry trying to get forward. Thought she was stopped illegally. Referee says that she was and it's going to be a free in. And a chance for Armagh to push it out again to three points. Referee coming over here to talk to his linesman. Wondering, did he think there was any more in it? Maybe, but uh, Jennifer Curry, the captain, of course, uh, being attended to. So Rachel Murray, a chance to get her fifth, six point of the game. Sends it in, and the Armagh crowd like it down to my right-hand side. It's over the bar. A clear now again. Have to go up that mountain, but Armagh rejecting it. And driving it on, Ashin Harvey. 
Ball is in. Looks like it's going to be a free in. And Emer Smith causing a few problems in there now in the full forward line. And Claire now struggling to find a few answers. And uh, Rachel Murray fancy her chances here. And this will be the biggest lead that Armagh had. And at this stage now you would feel Claire are going to need goal. Rachel Murray standing over this. It'll be two on the bounce from her. Umpire got the nod. So a quarter of an hour to go. 2.13 to 15. It's 15 scores apiece, but the goals are the difference. Jennifer Curry's after 10, and then a fine goal from Emer Smith. Getting inside and rattling the back of uh, Lawrence Solon's net. Referee has gone in to talk to his umpires. And now they're saying it's a wide ball. So That must have come from the linesman over on the far side, I think. So that score notched off. So it remains a three-point game. And maybe that might be something for Claire to cling to. Ball batted down in the middle, but it goes towards an Armagh player and eventually trying to get in there and get possession of it is uh, Lee Shaw Donnell, who, I have to say, in the first half was so important to the Clare effort. Seems to have just gone over it a little bit. And uh, going to be a free for Armagh. And uh, if Murray's chance was notched off, maybe this is a chance to get it back. Looks like it's going to be a card as well for Clare's number 19. Clean it quickly. He felt was a little bit over robust with the hurl there. <coughs> oh, Murray sending this on its way. Has she got it this time? Umpire likes it. And I don't think there'll be any doubt on this one. So two thirteen to 15 points and that goal that was scored by Emer Smith although <coughs> it's 10 minutes ago now really burst the clear balloon a little bit Michelle McMahon trying to get that ball in but she wins it back at the second time has another strike at it ball inside but just all of a sudden now ball not running for the clear forward line and they need something to happen, an inspiration to come from somewhere. Maybe from Sinead O'Keefe it'll happen. Giving it to Neve Mulqueen, going to have a strike from 65 metres out. Dangerous ball, it's caught inside. Lachnan going to have a shot at it. Looks to have hit the deck, she just couldn't get the swing at it. And uh, Armagh have the defenders there. Ash and Harvey driving it out to the far side. But Clare have turned it over. Looking to play it down along the wing. Decent ball, need a score. Just put it over the bar to Clare. The fans look for it. And that it is, it's up and over the bar. And it might just settle the nerve there. Clare's number nine, Grace Carmody, with that latest point. 2.13 to 16 points. And there's a stop in play as uh, Tierna Maguire has to get a little bit of attention. I think she was involved in that block there on Lachnan. Lachnan caught the ball, lovely, turned him. Just was trying to get the strike away, though. Was surrounded. Maguire heading to the line, and obviously... Needs repair or blood or whatever. And it looks like Armagh's number 19. Is it Emer Smith? Over on the far side. Looks like she might be coming in temporarily. Hey. So... 18 minutes gone in the second half. 2.13 to 16. Armagh getting on the ball around the middle. Donnelly looking to play this ball. Spray it across over this far side. Trying to get up there. Jennifer Curry. Ball breaks away from her. And it's the clear defence that are looking to come out with it. But that's a good rob there by Sinead Quinn. As she got her fourth point of the game. The Armagh crowd down to my right. Love it. Ball is over the bar. And if Claire are not careful. This game could start sailing away from them. 
And it looks like that blood sub has been reversed there. Maguire back in. So 2.14 to 16. It was around this time in the other game that the game turned. Roscommon were getting close to Tipperary and then two goals in quick succession. Ultimately won the game for them. Clare take a sharp puck out. Referee said it was a foul committed and it's a chance for the free to be taken. Ball breaks down. Cahill, very influential player to start of the second half. Uh, maybe position has dried up in the last while. Clare looking to get forward. It's going to drive it in there from Neve Mulqueen. Up and over the bar. And again, will that ignite Clare? It's a right game though. 17 scores for Clare. 2-14 for Armagh. Three point game again. 10 minutes to go. Who will play Tipperary on the 6th of August in Crow Park? Ball breaks. Might work out for Clare there with Clean Aquili. Down into the corner it goes. Looking for Lucknan. Gets it under control at the second time of asking. Looked like she got a pull there but gets it back. Giving it back to uh, Queely. Into the middle it goes. Decent ball now for Carmody. Carmody fires it in and over the bar. Two in the bounce from the midfield crew. And Grace Carmody turning in a fine hour. She's had three points from midfield. And that's two from the midfield pairing in the space of 40 seconds. And it's a two-point game. Right in the hunt now again, are clear. Ball breaks. Into the middle it comes with McMahon. Okay, here's a shout outside from Mel Queen. Dropping it in. It's a long ball. It's asking an awful lot though. And uh, just a little bit too much power on that one from Neve Mulqueen. Ball out, short one to Nicola Woods. Pressure got to be put on by the clear corner forward. Quiva Cahal blocks it down there. Now a little bit of pressure on. Three on three in here. Looking to get the clearance from Woods. Good clearance from uh, Nicola Woods, you'd have to say. Out to the 40, 65 metre line it comes. Ball was touched down. It might suit McMahon. Looked like it was very close to the line. The uh, Armagh crowd reckon it was over. The line's man quite happy with it. It wasn't all over the line. Ball goes back. Clare looking out to get within a point again. Jennifer Curry looking to keep that ball from Clare. Knocking it down the line. But it's in behind now. Trying to get it moving here with uh, Kai, with uh, Casey Toomey. But it's uh, back into the hands here of Alicia O'Donnell. She drives it in. And drives it over the bar. Clare having their 10 minutes now are they? It's a one point game with eight minutes to go. And it's been that spell of play there. They've got four points in four minutes, have clear. And the puck out comes from Kiri Devlin. Out to the middle, but uh, no doubt about it. Just trying to commit to it to get in there ahead, Ellen Casey. But Donnelly was in in front of her, and as soon. As the pressure came on, it was going to be a free, no question about it. Leanne Donnelly using all her experience there to relieve some of the pressure that's on her defence. I might have said Armagh or Clare might have needed a goal, but credit to them. They've gone hunting the scores, putting the pressure on, and four in quick succession has helped that. Are we still talking about extra time, Danny, here? It looked like it was done and dusted about seven or eight minutes ago. Back in the pot again it is for consideration. With seven minutes remaining. <laughs> Clare lads are happy here with the linesman. Putting that free in the right situation. So Katie Kumuski. Uh, try and launch this in on the 20 metre line at the far end plenty of uh, orange and white jerseys up there sending it on its way clear defender bats it away not too sure of it though got to be careful Murray is up there but it looks like uh, Emer Smith was putting pressure on as well Jennifer Curry is in there has been quite enough in this game Jennifer since she got that cracking goal after 10 minutes but he just wouldn't want to give her a sniff of it. And somehow she works that ball back. Shot coming in from Karina Doyle. But she's pulled it to the right and wide. 
six minutes left. Clare a point down. Who's going to be playing Tipperary on the 6th of August? Long ball forward, but it's gone out over the line. It's going to be a sideline ball for Armagh. Gemma McCann. Ball falls down. Michelle McMahon. Look at the drive this ball back across the field now. And they come on to it here now. Grace Carmody. But it's well taken there by Ashen Harvey having a big second half. But it's uh, clear. Wing back there. O'Keefe that gets to that and wins it quite well. Chance to get the leveller into a bit of space here now. Lochnan out in front. Again clear of a little bit of an overlap. Surely a crash into the back. And it's a chance for Lochnan to get a free and the leveller here. Sarah Lucknan standing over this free. Now five minutes and whatever then the referee wants to play. Once this ball goes over the bar. Has Lucknan made it a draw game? The umpires are going for the flag. The last score she got was on the 38th minute but in fairness... There's been some of the players around the middle that have chipped in with the scores as well. And now we have a draw game. When Rachel Murray put over that point on 46 and added to by Sinead Quinn, it was a four-point game for Armagh. But Clare fought back. Have gone up the mountain twice now. Have they got it in them to see the winner? Jennifer Daly going to try and get in that. Winning the ball in front of her uh, sisters here sitting in front of us. No, large numbers of the clear senior panel sitting in front of us here as this ball breaks and it's going to be a throw ball and it's all getting tetchy now I think this is the first throw ball we've had in the game oh, Clare were involved in drama last year of course where they played Antrim in a game that of course Antrim eventually went on to win the All-Ireland where they defeated Armagh two periods of extra time were played in that game do Clare want to be in that again? The ball is played forward now. A chance maybe to come and win this. It's uh, Casey Toomey getting in there. But the Armagh defensive knocked it away. Driving on to a strong daily. Did it very, very well. Touch of the ball there from Lee Shaw Donald. The two youngsters trying to win it between them. But it's played up long there by uh, Katie Kumiski. Ball drops now. O'Keefe looking to come forward. Jewel Star in their day, of course. Looking to put it on the end of the hurl. Being held up now. And looking to get forward. Definitely was met there. As she looked to play that ball forward. And it's going to be a chance for Sarah Lucknan. It's a long way, way out though. Wasn't a whole lot Gemma McCann could do there. I think getting out of the way. But she did commit the foul. She was committed to it. So it all favours clear now here at the minute. With three minutes remaining. Sinead O'Keefe, you'd have to credit her. She came up alongside, tight up along that line. <laughs> Who does this suit now to stop and play? Claire Arma. Big free for Sarah Lochnan. Nine points she's got in this game so far of Clare's 20. This is massive. Two minutes of normal time. You'd imagine there's going to be at least two. And for whatever chat went on that free has been moved forward Sarah Lucknan with probably one of the biggest frees she's had to take in her inter-county career It's on its way. It's right over the bar. That is a huge score from Sarah Lochnan. That took 
an awful lot of guts and determination and Clare are in front again hasn't happened too many times in this game not sure whether that puck out should have been allowed to happen but because the player was moving but anyway it's been gotten away quickly to Ashton Harvey ball is inside but it's the Sinead Hogg has got a cross to be able to clear that Armad looking to come winning on this but it's going to be a clear free and that all suits clear now Three minutes of additional time to be played. This is still in the melting pot. Clare have climbed up that mountain twice already. They're now in front at uh, 21 points to 214. Looking to get a block on it. They've done that. Need to keep the ball down this end of the field. Leisha O'Donnell getting it to Carmody. Carmody going to have a strike off. She puts it high. It's over the bar. Grace Carmody has had a big second half here. Driving forward with some big points at crucial moments. And she's definitely going to be in our player of the match contention. Two point game all of a sudden. Clare have everything going for them. Ten minutes ago. Who would have thought this was possible? They were facing a four point deficit. And looked like they were in trouble. But all of a sudden Clare have managed to keep the ball down this end of the field. Two minutes of uh, added time to play. Still time for someone to win and lose this game. Ball driven forward now. Underneath it again is uh, McMahon. Ball slips from Agosto. Armagh will sense blood. They'll know how to find the back of the onion sack. There's no question about it. Sinead Quinn playing that ball forward. Clare got to be careful. Armagh coming in hunt again. In there trying to get on that ball. Leanne Donnelly. Ball breaks though and it's Clare's to hold now. Will it be an All-Munster All-Ireland final? Will it be clear and tip? Will our mass still have something to say about it? Hunting their fourth All Ireland final appearance in a row. Ball is up there in around the melting pot again. Ball is still though with Rachel Murray. Looking to get the shot off here. Ball is out here coming with Komiski. Looking to turn inside. That's going to be a free in, I think. A minute and 20 seconds on our clock remaining. This will add on a few more seconds, you would imagine, as well. If you're Armagh, I think you put this ball over the bar, do you? So, as I said to you... Derry are into the intermediate final for the Jack McGrath Cup. They'll be uh, playing for that on the 6th of August. Mead and Westmead currently underway. The Premier Junior final. Tipperary already there. Will it be Clare or will it be Armagh? And you'd have to say she's probably taken one for the team there, Ellen Casey. Yellow card for her in stopping the forward movement there of Katie Kumiski. So what do Armagh do here? It's going to be about eight Arm or, uh, Clare players on the line. Sometimes I think when you overpack the goal line, that can cause problems, but it could be nine or ten before we finish up here. Well, there's still time. And uh, Rachel Murray elects to go for the score. I think you don't take any chance there. So 63 minutes gone here. And it is 22 points to 21. The referee is holding up the play because there's a substitution going to be made. And that's a clever one of whoever's making it. I think and it's clear. Just killing momentum again. Jennifer Daly is the one that's going to show her a fine game from her as well.
And it looks like Eve Anderson is the one that's coming in. So puck out again. One point game and probably one of the best Camogie matches I've seen all year anyway. Ball is driven out long. Underneath the there is Ellie McKee. He's had a big game for Armagh. Ball breaks in the middle. Lee O'Donnell looking to go on to that. Referee is going to give a free in. And right it was. I don't think there's any doubts about it. Lee O'Donnell. She's covered some amount of grass for Claire out there today. Had a big first half I thought. But uh, Sinead Quinn just in her exuberance probably to win the ball back. Also, Michelle McGuigan. And it looks like chance is going to begin for Armagh. 64 and a half minutes we have on our clock. I'd say time is up on this. This needs to go dead, though, from a clear point of view. Keep it alive, you give Armagh a chance. Ball is driven long, high, and handsome in on the edge of the square. Anyone to get a bat on the referee says of a square ball. And it's still in play. Free is going to be brought forward now. Claire just got to be careful. Armagh have one more chance here. Long ball with the big boss from Kiri Devlin. Dropping in now down around the half back line. Ball breaks away. Armagh looking to get another shot at it. Could be Karina Doyle there. But there's enough clear bodies around you to imagine. Ball breaks though. Doyle is added a second time. Referee allows the play to continue. Back it goes to Michelle McGuigan. Being held up there by O'Keefe. Lee Shaw Donnell in to win that ball. And it's all over. Claire are in the All-Ireland Final with a tremendous comeback in the last 10 minutes. Coming from four points down to win that by one in the end. Climbed the mountain, I said twice, and they eventually got over it. Hard luck to uh, Armagh. What a team they've been over the last four years in uh, being there or thereabouts. Just unlucky that that team has only won one All-Ireland in those last years heartbreak for them but what a cracking game of Camogie and as I said to you one of the best games I've seen this year but it's going to be an all Munster affair Tip will take on Clare at 12.50 on the 6th of August for the K-Mills Cup in the Glen Dimplex Premier Junior Championship Final when all that action was going on we probably forgot to tell you our player of the match. We're giving the nod here to Grace Carmody of Clare. Getting our player of the match for her performance. There was others there. The likes of Sarah Lachnan, obviously Quiva Cahill at various different stages had big points. The centre field pairing though ultimately I think may have turned the game in the favour of Clare. And you'd have to credit though the likes of Karina Doyle, Emer Smith, Rachel Murray, Sinead Quinn. They were ones that really took the fight. Leanne Donnelly as well to Claire, but unfortunately for them, Claire just had it in the legs in the last 10 and just kept the pressure on. And that salvo of points where they got three in the space of 90 seconds was ultimately uh, the game turning point here that saw victory for Claire. So they will play Armagh in the final in Crow Park on the 6th of August for the right to win the K Mills Cup. And that will happen, as he said, at 12.50 on that day. Congratulations to Claire. They will play tips. Stay with us. We're heading to the pitch to pick up some interviews with our player of the match. And also we'll hear from the manager.
watching the man you're just watching the cameraman here and you're welcome back onto the pitch here and our player of the match Grace Carmody can you put that into words Grace um, unbelievable I think <laughs> nearly having a heart attack out there to be honest but just so happy to get over the line um, we've been quite now like quite close the past three years so we're just happy to get over the line and give it a right go in the final you had that though a game where I, I said it on commentary twice you had to go up a mountain it, it was with 10 minutes ago it was four points down and they were just in a bit of a groove you know yeah. you, you had to kind of get to grips with it very quickly yeah no it's all about the purple patch and once you keep performing and performing you'll get the results and just, just thankfully we got over the line there and you know it'll stand to us in the final like a good battle that's what you want going into a final so hopefully we get over the line then again in the final and all is happy <laughs> you can, you, but I'm just crediting yourself and, and obviously uh, McQueen which in, in, in centre of the field that you yeah. probably tightened just things up a little bit and just kept pressure on then because our man were struggling then to get the puck off away yeah look that's what you're training for like those tight battles and to, that's what we're working on at training to get away those passes off the shoulder and just to put it between the two crossbars so thankfully we did that today but you're not going to have days like that all the time so but just hopefully it goes that way for us again in the final and please God Was there worries at any stage? I'm just thinking you hadn't conceded a goal coming in here today and then two go in you know Yeah but look that happens like do you know it's camogie it's goals and points so goals are going to go in points are going to go over you just have to keep tapping away your own scores and thankfully that happened so yeah, we're just happy there. So a trip to Croker and a, an all Munster <laughs> battle. Yeah, no, that's that's what you dream of really going to Croker. Like you don't get those opportunities a lot, so we're just so delighted to be getting that opportunity, and we'll have a record and final. I said it to Tipperary though as well that uh, you know for someone like Clare having two teams being able to keep the standard going within the county great that you're in a situation where you are competing then in an All-Ireland final Yeah exactly look at you're training with the seniors every night of the week like we're training with the likes of Clare Herher or the Doug and Nevo D like Chloe Morey like they really drive you on a train and you, <laughs> you don't want to run into them like so <laughs> yeah we're just delighted congratulations Grace there's birthday Great. celebrations going on over there so I'll let you over to who it is, who it is but I'm going to call in uh, the manager uh, John Carmody is going to join us now uh, John congratulations uh, you probably lived every bit of, I see you split on the top of your head I don't know whether you were out there hurling as well were you well there were a few hairs I've left there I think they're gone after that uh, what a game of camogie um, hats off to our uh, brilliant team mm. uh, but hats off to our girls what character they showed uh, four points down mm. two or twelve minutes to go and then to come along and score 22 points and, and win by two this is a huge breakthrough for Ter Camogie and uh, you know uh, we've a combined group there juniors and seniors training all year and our senior team uh, I, I want to mention them because the juniors are going to get the line right now but like uh, we have girls there that came in wanting to be on the Ter Camogie panels because of the leaders and the role models we have on the senior yeah. team and uh, they've come in they've seen how you prepare how you need to prepare for the highest level and this is a huge breakthrough for us now getting to Crook Park regardless of the result in that final uh, we know now we'll have six or seven girls that will get the experience needed to push on onto our senior panel next year and hopefully that this win gives the encouragement for our other younger players Paul Quigley and his management team are an under 16A Shield fi semi fi All-Ireland final right. next yeah. Saturday yeah. and I wish them the best to look and those players should be looking at two or three years time pushing in here and uh, you know it, it, it's uh, I'm just thrilled for the whole Camogie Clare set up a lot of work going in and uh, it's, it's tremendous now to take a Clare team to Crook Park Well it says a lot about it John the fact that uh, there was a rich vein of uh, senior panel members here and everything cheering you on Yeah look there's a tight bond there um, you know, we'd have been very disappointed. We shipped two very serious injuries in the senior game against Cork and it, it looked a bad beating in the end, but it did not reflect the work that our senior team put in. We'd like to think that our performance against Galway, uh, where we pushed Galway to the last puck of the ball in Cusick Park two weeks before that, is where our senior team is at. And we're trying to build and clear. Look, at there is a gap between the top four and, 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 and th there's a cohort of teams underneath them, ourselves, Wexford, Dublin, you know, Waterford possibly. And um, we need to, put, we're trying to, get the work done to push beyond that group and challenge the top four and we're going the right way about it uh, but today was huge for us uh, if we didn't win here today well, there's huge work put in by this management team I want to commend our coaches uh, Eugene Foody and Ryan Morris excellent hurling coaches doing tremendous work uh, our strength and conditioning Jamie Fitzgibbon you see the condition of the girls there we finished strong I think we got yeah. the last six points yeah. and uh, Brendan Foley with our goalkeeper Emery McGann there's a huge effort going in from everybody in the setup, and for, just for, not just for the players but the management and the county board as a whole they'll give us considerable backing and we're eagerly looking forward to bringing the Clare team to Croke Park now and what is sitting and, and, and we'll prepare for two weeks and we, we're really looking forward to these girls letting them play their camogie in Croke Park 
John, can I just ask you though, I'm on commentary, I don't see them every night or anything like that, so I'm looking at a game here today, Armagh get a goal, they build on a couple of points and all of a sudden they have that four point lead and there's ten minutes to go, you're thinking, they've been in this pot before, they know how to see this out. Tell me on the line, you had obviously utmost confidence in what was going on, what ultimately turned the free? Well, I think our bench turned it for us, uh, ultimately. And, and look, we had girls there that didn't get on today, excellent players. We, we have a, a very even, committed uh, team of players. And Joe, the likes of Clean Queely, Clean Queely there coming in, wing back, give it a lift. Um, you know, um, all, the, all the subs came in. Casey Toomey added pace inside the full forward line. So it's kind of the sum of its parts. I think we finished with a very athletic, fit team on the field and, and, and that helped us push over the line. And then we had the players able to keep their heads and get quality scores. Need Queen got a great point from the middle of the field. Grace had chipped in with one or two. Leisha O'Donnell got a great score. And Sarah Lucknan on the freeze today. Yeah. Outstanding, outstanding. Absolutely. Well, we wish you the best of luck. You have two weeks to look forward to, John. It's going to be a headache now to pick a team, I'd imagine. That's what we want. I, you know, we love those headaches. And uh, just to hopefully for... Our bench are watching this and hopefully they'll be watching it over the next couple of days. Uh, hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll push on because they're pushing on and they're driving standards. And, uh, you know, uh, delighted for everyone at that panel to get to Grace Croke Park and uh, huge test against Tipperary now. We look forward to it. Well, congratulations and well done, John, and thanks for joining us. John Carmody there, uh, the uh, Clare manager, giving us his thoughts then on their victory here today and uh, cracking two semi finals. I know the 10 point uh, win for Tip probably doesn't do Ross Common justice, but two good games here and our right semi final here between Armagh and uh, Clare. But uh, unfortunately, that run of Armagh I've been on the last few years has come to an end. They've been defeated here by an up and coming Clare crew. Well, who knows where they're going to stop if uh, they're able to drive on from Crow Park but Tipperary stand in their way and that all happens on the 6th of August at 12.50 that is the fight for the K Mills Cup in the Premier Junior Championship Final don't forget Derry are already through and intermediate underway at the minute you can watch Mead and West Mead with Paul Jenkins live from Simple Stadium and also just getting underway now is, Cor- is uh, Waterford I should say and Tipperary in the senior semi-final that follows at 5.30 those games the senior games from Nolan Park are on RT2 and the RTE player and my thanks to Danny Turley for the great work done in the background on behalf of Entre my thanks to him and to all the lads back at base my name is Killian Whelan we'll talk to you soon <laughs>